Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Death Mark 2. Previously we completed Chapter 6 and began Chapter 7, and now we're off to the finale of the game to defeat the Departed once and for all. Masuda and Yasuoka are waiting for me. I've been reporting our findings to them. You're finally here. What did you find? I tell them the information I learned from the student dormitory. Knew it. Ichiho Kinokawa is a departed. And now the whole murder in the clock tower is also cleared up. That was just another one of the departed's tricks. Kinokawa manipulated you into thinking you killed her. Why did she do that? What do you think she did that? Probably to destroy your mind with fear. She wanted to drive you insane. Maybe you being insane is one of the departed's marriage requirements. You're thinking like an insane bride deserves an insane groom. It makes some sense. Killing a student is in love with you. That certainly would be something that could drive a person mad. That mind would have been shared had Doryu not shown up that day. No. No, no, no. Say, Doryu. Is the whole Avenge Michiho for me promise I made with you still intact? Yes. This doesn't change the fact that the Departed still harmed Michiho. Alright, I'll do my best then. Yashiki, there's something I'd like to tell you. I've deciphered the book you gave me. Appreciate it. This book details an ancient M-Town ritual. Allow me to give you the gist. I jot down what Yasuko says in my notebook. The pasts of your famine devastate M-Town. Residents of the town believed the fear of their deities, Mushigami and Kabigami, were the cause of the tragedy. And shrines were built to worship the deities. Mushigami Shrine was located in downtown, while Kabigami Shrine was built in the Fox Forest. So Mushigami got torn down, because the school got built. Kabigami, I'm assuming, was messed up over the years, because we saw the shrine, if that's the same one. And it's like, fallen disrepair. So the two gods get together, and they're like, hey... Man, these humans... They ain't being nice anymore. Let's go and uh, make some centipedes sprout out of their brains. Mushigami Shrine and Kabigami Shrine are merely halls of worship for the two deities, one an insect deity and the latter a mold deity. Insects and mold, they, they work together. The main shrine to both, Mushikabi, is located elsewhere. We need to go Mushikabi. Mushikabi Shrine is located deep in the fox forest off the road. Only relatives of the priest and the fox, the messenger, know how to get to the shrine. The Departed's wedding was held when a great famine occurred in M-Town. Held to wish for the end of the famine, this is also a secret wedding ceremony where the matched brides and grooms exchange vows before the two deities. This ritual was last held during the Meiji era, about a hundred years ago. It's said the selected brides and grooms completed the ceremony at Mushikabi Shrine, and the Great Famine in Emtan finally came to an end. Because as a holy ritual, the selection of criteria for the brides and grooms was quite stringent. The grooms must be from the priest's family, and have impeccable spiritual qualities, which we kind of do. As for the brides, they must be pure maidens that come from a decent family. Furthermore, both of them have to be exceptional in all aspects, including intelligence, lineage, and personality. Hence, the chosen brides and grooms are said to be blessed and in the envy of the town. After she's done explaining the contents of the book, I'm left speechless. Deity's name for bugs and mold, to the parts winning the bride and the groom in the selection. There are so many things in this book that overlap with the departs' actions and remarks. This book is definitely our way to find out the Depart's true identity. Agreed. It feels like we finally managed to get a real look at the Departed's history. But... Yasuko halts her words, pondering. If there's something on your mind, just say it out loud, Yasuoka. Do you not find this strange? If the wedding ritual was a blessed event, like the book said, how could the Departed have been born? She has a point. Like some of my previous interactions with spirits are birth from grudges. Some weird tie to that doll. This book probably only covers a sanitized version of the truth. It was never part shrouded in the darkest aberrants. That's the part you'll need to uncover. They didn't get married, they just sacrificed them. <laughs> we already inspected Mushigami Shrine in the corridor, and Kamigami Shrine in the forest during an encounter with Mr. Kakuri. However, we didn't find any clues about the departing. The last one is Mushikabi Shrine, then. There might be something of note there. Mushikabi Shrine is located in the depths of the forest. 
we don't have time to explore the whole forest. Then our only choice is to ask the fox how to get there. Yo, so goes referring to the fox, the messenger of the gods mentioned in the book. There's a fox in the storage area of the science room, though it doesn't look like a messenger to me. Statue. I'm gonna need to find another fox. Now they have some direction. I can finally start the investigation. By the way, is Hero not coming tonight? Yeah, I didn't contact her. I made that call. This is above her pay grade now. The Departed has transformed and grown stronger. They are more dangerous than before. So it seemed prudent not to get Hero when they have a great of people involved any further. That applies to you guys, too. Don't get me wrong, I really appreciate your help. I just don't understand why you're willing to risk so much to help me. One's a paranormal cop, and the other one's like a paranormal person. Like Yasuoka said, the Departed has transformed and acknowledged me as her husband. This is not another level than helping me deal with the spirits and the notices. I have no idea what will happen next. Yet they've decided to jump into the hellhole alongside me. Where does that determination of theirs come from? This is my job. I believe it is my fate to save those who are terrorized by the wrath of the spirits. I have only lived this long because my purpose in the world of living has not been completed yet. This is my job too. Because this old bag here asked me to. In a more literal sense, because I actually get paid to do it. The pay is worth the risk. Simple, straightforward answers. This is why I've placed my faith in them. A strong faith that can't be described in words. The simple ways they lead their lives makes me feel like I can trust them with mine. Thank you. <sighs> let's head out if we're done chatting. Yeah, let's go, Shadow. Wait a minute, Mishiyashiki. Can I... Can I come with you? Hmm. No, you're the departed. No, that force is gonna be dangerous. Stay put here, Doryu. But what? You look awfully pale, Doryu. If you collapse, you only make things more difficult for Yashiki. Let's both wait here, alright? Understood. Doryu nods reluctantly at Yasuoka's insistence. Please be very careful, Mr. Yashiki. Let's bring an end to this stupid game, Yashiki. It's time for these two paranormal cops to handle this paranormal ghost. Like all the other victims, Michiho's corpse disappeared from inside the clock tower. I asked Mashita and Yasuoka to help me out. Mashita suspects Michiho might be the departed given their similarities. I need to investigate to see whether or not this theory is true. We needed information about Michiho to determine whether or not she was the departed. Upon inspecting her room, I learned she used to like frogs instead of bugs. Doryu told me she changed around the end of August. I bet that's when the Depart killed Michiho, and began masquerading as her. The book Yasuoka deciphered has information about a ritual called the Departed's Wedding, in M-Town and the Village Deities. Mushigami and Kabigami, bugs and mold played a big role. Mushikabi Shrine, where the ritual took place, is located deep in the Fox Forest. We need to find a way into the main shrine. Fox. Hmm. The master statue of the Guardian Fox stands here. It's darkened, which gives one the impression that it's been here for quite some time. A Guardian Fox, uh, I guess this could be called the Messenger of the Gods. We might find a clue to the location of the Mushikabi Shrine. We better inspect it. But this fox was really put here to protect the Mushigami Shrine. While the fox is usually known as the Messenger of the Inari Shrine in other parts of Japan, I guess it's different in this area. I can't seem to find anything unusual about this even after I fully inspect it. It's not like this fox is just going to start talking. What do we do now? How long are you going to keep staring at that statue? You try to check in the pedestal? Oh, you're right. If it's really just on the pedestal, I'm going to laugh. I drag my flashlight toward the weathered pedestal and inspect it, as Mashita watches with a look of annoyed disbelief. It looks like there are some letters written on the bottom part of the pedestal. This might lead us to the location of the shrine. Let's try to read it. I tried reading the letters on the bottom of the pedestal. However... Damn. I can't read anything with all the mold covering it. The hell? Just brush it off, then. I tried, but it didn't come off at all. It must be stuck on goods as it's been growing undisturbed for so long. We need some mold remover. Damn it. 
We are carrying some really shitty things in this case. So where should we get some? Most stores are already closed for the night. Half room. Hmm. Let's look around the school. They must have that kind of thing for cleaning. So I did find a mold remover in the broom closet when I was investigating Hanago's case. And searching the entire school would definitely take some time. We better ask someone who's familiar with the school first. Worst case scenario, we'll head all the way back to Kujo Mansion and the grab something that'll do it. Oh, okay. The O O K face. Huh? What brought you back? We've encountered a bit of a problem and need your help. I tell her about the mold on the pedestal and ask if she knows where we can find some mold remover. Mold remover? I'm pretty familiar with the school, but I have no idea where they keep that. My apologies. At this rate, I really will have to go back to Kujo Mansion to get mold remover. Sorry for sticking my nose in, but is there any bleach around that you know of? Bleach? Actually, yeah, it does remove mold. I know this for a fact. Mold remover and chlorine bleach have similar ingredients. Do you happen to know where the bleach is, do you? You can clean up old statues that way, actually, or, uh, cement. Hmm? There should be a bottle in the student council room. I don't exactly remember where it is in the room, there's a... According to Doryu, there should be a ball of bleach here somewhere. Let's get looking for it. No reason to dawdle. In here? Yes. We've scoured the student council room, but we haven't found anything to remove that mold. Maybe it's inside here. I open the door to find all sorts of miscellaneous stuff crammed inside. From a giant hole puncher and an old notes to a certificate of commendation. I guess anything that isn't used often gets shoved into here. Among them is a ball of liquid bleach. Judging by the weight, there seems to be plenty left. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? I open the bleach ball and pour the liquid into the pedestal. Then I wait a bit before using my handkerchief to remove the mold. It doesn't come off completely, but it does a decent job enough that I can actually make out the letters. We should be able to read what's written on the pedestal now. The writing on the pedestal is apparently a poem that seems a bit like a nursery rhyme. The old writing style of Wevery makes reading a more difficult task than I anticipated. I managed to copy into my notebook. Follow the fox's wine inviting us to the shrine, but the path is blocked by the serpent rock. The beast behind the zodiac shall be the one to open the track, imitating the serpent with its angry lament. What is the meaning of this rhyme? Yet yeah, we can find out if we go to the fox forest. The fox forest is just beyond this gate. Mushikabe Shrine, where the departed's wedding is held, is located somewhere in this forest. Alright, Yashiki. You know what kind of horrors are waiting for us in there? Hang on to this gun. We'll be very careful with it. Machida hands me the paper bag again. It's heavy. Doubt I'll ever get used to this thing. You shouldn't. Let's go. Relying on the faint light for my flashlight, we tentatively step into the darkness of the forest. Mr. Kakuri is no longer here, however. A more terrifying spirit might have replaced him. As fear and tension build up inside my mind, beads of sweat start raining down my cheeks. Hold on. Listen carefully. Do you hear that? I hear a faint moan. It doesn't make sense. Why are we hearing that here? 
I have a bad feeling about this. Hurry up. Sakamono. Mashina ranch over the source of the sound. After a while, I arrive at an open area full of trees. There. Oh, God, Sakamono. I've had Sakamono in a horrible state. Sakamono, what's happening to you? It sounds like she's a doll. You all... Did some insane... Did some insanely big bug chew you up or something? What the heck happened to you? Are you... Perhaps... Lord Mushigami... Come again. What are you saying? It's no use. Just clearly not in the right mind. For Rack's sake, is there anything we can do for her? Like most only screams. At that moment, the bugs clinging to her launch an attack. Damn. What are we gonna do, Yashiki? We're in deep shadow if we have to keep dealing with this. Act 1. Well, I think she might be too far gone to save. I hope we can at least do something for her. However, what's happening in Sakamoto now is a paranormal phenomenon or mere hallucination. And we can return Sakamoto to our senses. Yush. Yush. And a full Sakamoto's report and read out loud so she can hear it. I carefully read the report out loud. Sakamoto isn't responding much, so I can tell that she's listening. Is there still a glimmer of her consciousness left? If so, my voice might still reach her. Remember, Sakamoto, this is a report you wrote. Huh. Is that my... Why is it... Looks like Sakamoto's returned to her senses a little bit. Looks like this is the right choice. Murmur is stupefied. Folks just sticking out of the large holes in her head and chest. If this were a normal situation, these wounds would have killed her long ago. However, she's talking. This is probably never instant that departed curse. Mr. Yashiki. Her remaining left eye fixes his gaze upon me. I guess she's recognized me. She's well beyond saving at this point. Maybe I can still ask him questions. Main translocation. Tell me where the main shrine is. You went there, didn't you? The main shrine. Main shrine beyond the serpent rock. There. Make the bloody red. Pure. Blue. I'm just speechless. Like a puppet whose strings have been cut, Sakamoto collapses on the spot. She stops moving and... Instantly insects swarm her body. They begin to devour her before my very eyes. Stop it! I try to kick the insects off her. This is futile. There's no way these bugs can be stopped. Please stop. Stop this. I can't bear to watch so my new can consume my insects bit by bit. In the end, I have to avert my eyes. Once the insects finish eating her body, they scatter into the dark forest. There's not a trace of Sakamoto's remains, bones or clothes left. Why, Sakamoto? Did that teacher try to railroad you out of the school? But the part doesn't want you to leave. That probably led her to being cursed. Sakamoto was cursed by the departed. 
That probably explains why she'd gone mad in the middle of writing her report, hearing a voice in her head the way Izumi had. It was all because of her hostility toward me. It was because she got mixed up with me. I wasn't here. The Sakamoto one. Let's pump the brakes on that right now. I'm not a priest. So I'm not here to listen to your pitiful wailing, Nafi Repentance. But maybe that woman was actually saved. Otherwise, she wouldn't have regained her sanity on the brink of death. And she wouldn't have been able to leave that hint for you either. I recall Sakamoto's last words. The main shrine is beyond the serpent rock. There make the bloody red pure blue. The latter half is a mystery to me. I've got an idea what she was referring to in the first half. Maybe the doll? Serpent rock is also written on the fox pedestal. Is that rock the key to get to the main shrine? Resentment. <laughs> what was that voice just now? That bridal procession. Hey, you're seeing visions again. Yeah. Wow, that's a pretty handy way to gather information. Seeing as our investigation so far is going nowhere fast. So what do you see? I relay the details about the scene I saw and what the voice told me. I see. If the description in the old book is right, that's something like the departed's wedding. So you're saying I saw the past. The bridal procession went through the forest. I guess he must have been heading to Mushikabi Shrine. Who'd the voice belong to, though? I have no idea, but... I know your resentment isn't the type of thing you say during a happy occasion. I knew it. There's something darker behind it. If we follow the bridal procession ahead to the Mushikabi Shrine, which is located somewhere deep in the forest, will we finally be able to find out the truth about the Departed's wedding? Hmm. Rabbit. Oh, Sakamoto. I find something glowing inside the firebox of the stone lantern. Intrigued, I peer into the firebox. It's like clumps of molder growing, almost looking like moss. It's a strange sight. Black and red molder intermingled, making it look poisonous. This is the vision of hell or something. I spot a small obstacle within. This is what was reflecting the light. So I need to put my hand into these ominous mountain mold to pick it up. Do it. I have no choice. I still put my hand to the firebox. Slow but careful, I try to avoid the mold. My fingers end up touching the mold. It feels muggy, but it's not indescribable. I get goosebumps all over my body. Ugh. Repressing the urge to immediately pull my hand back, I extract said item buried in the mold. Tooth. I managed to pull it out. It's an eerie tooth. I wipe my hand freely with a handkerchief. I make a metal note to wash both my hand and the handkerchief later. The shrine grounds look the same as before. This used to be Kabegami Shrine, not the Mushikabi Shrine we're looking for. Now a pleasant flapping sound surrounds us. It only these insects. Mashita waves his hand, trying to drive them off. But the flying insects show no sign of scattering. That's so fracking annoying. Let's get the hell out of here, Yashiki. Agreed. We walk back to the path nearby. I feel something hard beneath the sole of my shoe. I lift my foot and look at the ground. There's something sitting there. Tooth. An eerie voice has been ringing in my ears for quite some time. The further we walk down the path, the louder the chant-like sound becomes. Does the cause of the spiritual phenomena lie ahead? 
Yeah, remember this? A gigantic rock is sitting in front of us. A fixed secret rope is wrapped around the rock. It's not resembling a snake head. This might be the serpent's rock Sakamoto was talking about. But what do we do now? Rock and serpent, serpent rock. Now that I think about it, serpent rock was also part of the rhyme written on the Guardian's Fox's platform. I'll put my notebook and check the rhyme. Fox is wine, inviting us to the shrine. The path is blocked by the serpent rock. Here's where we are now. The beast behind the zodiac should be the one to open the track. But imitating the serpent. All the fox's wine lies to the shrine. This is probably a clue how to get there. So we go down this path. The beast behind the zodiac should be the one to open the track by imitating the serpent with its angry lament. We'll open the path, that means we have to do something here. The main point here is the beast behind the zodiac. Until we can solve this riddle, we have no idea how to proceed. So what animal is the beast? I saw Fruits Basket. The beast in this rhyme is probably the cat. When they were picking which animals would be on the zodiac, it said the cat was late to the meeting, which is why it wasn't selected. A damn mouse! I heard that story too. Well, what about the lament part? Maybe the path will open if we imitate a cat's meow or something. Why meow? Hell if I know. Even common sense doesn't apply to spirit logic. Come on, Yashiki. Give it a try. Fine. <laughs> that doesn't seem like I accomplished anything at all. I see. So simply imitating a cat isn't enough. The path won't open without a cat's meow that sounds like it's imitating an angry snake. I don't get it. What we need is the sound of an angry cat that is trying to imitate a menacing snake. Yeah, it's not helping me. I can't even imagine what that would sound like. A fox? In a confusion, Mashida shrugs his shoulders dejectedly. Foxes are noisy. Like this. Oh, you're good at that. What? Yashiki! This place is... Are we back where we started? The atmosphere, atmosphere here is different, though. Spider lilies are blooming prolifically. The mushrooms glowing faintly. Everything looks surreal. As far as I can tell, I'm alive, but I feel like I'm lost in the afterlife. Have we perhaps made it to the hidden path to Mushukabi Shrine? What are you spacing on me for? Save all the brain work for later. We won't last long at this rate. Yeah. This area is filled with the curse's power. Where's the source of this power? I need to get rid of it immediately. Can't sprint. I'm dying, squirrel! Flowers, that looks like one in the schoolyard. Maybe there are some secrets lying here. Let's take a closer look. The garden fox has a blue spiral in its mouth. Chris Tooth is lying on the floor. Time to destroy the damn thing. Raising my foot, I step on the tooth. The cursed tooth shares into pieces. Strange, the curse doesn't abate. Frack, how is that possible? That's gotta mean the tooth you stepped on wasn't the cause of this curse. We gotta find the real cause then. I see traces of ammo tracks near the bushes beside the Guardian Fox. There might be something ahead. <laughs> ah! The se severe chill and overwhelming pressure instantly vanish. 
that because the curse is no longer active? What is this place anyway? A mysterious area filled with blue flowers and a rustic looking tomb in the center. This has to have some important meaning. I better inspect it thoroughly. And this is the well that Sadako comes out of. Yes. Two headstones with some words carved into them. The etching on one grave is weathered so much that it's basically unreadable. But at least it's also a few letters here and there. The ever has scarcely any trace left that it ever said anything to begin with. An eerie voice is ringing my ears again. Know your resentment. Could this voice belong to one of the spirits resisting here? Whose graves are they, though? If only we could find out who the owners of these tombs are. Let's investigate. My eyes are fixed on the tomb, though I can barely make out anything due to how faint these letters are. Maybe I can deduce what's written on the stone if I run my fingers over it and feel for the indentations. Focusing my attention on the tip of my finger, I attempt to slowly trace the letters. I see. On the left is grip, and the right is probably an N or maybe an M. I'm pretty sure this is a word. What could it be? Groom. This must be Groom. I give an answer to my mind. Hi. Ow. What? Did the spirit of this tomb just respond to my answer? If the owner of this grave is the spirit of a headless man in a wedding suit, is the one buried here one of the bridegrooms who died an unnatural death? I hear the sound of something small rolling around near the tomb. Tooth. That'll help. An old well surrounded by blue spider lilies. Why is it here? I have a bad feeling about this. Be careful, you won't inspect it, Yashiki. Now the Mashida make up a mind and approach the well. Then I timidly peer inside. There, I find nothing? A bunch of stones and gravel, that's all. Well, thank goodness my hunch was wrong. What a disappointment. Yes. Blue spider lilies are growing in clumps. Spider lilies are usually red, though there are white and yellow varieties. But blue spider lilies don't exist naturally. These might be mystical flowers that only bloom in this mysterious hidden path. I pluck a blue spider lily and put it in my bag. Stop screaming. I hear the piercing high-pitched cry of a beast somewhere. <coughs> Chills run down my body. An ominous sense of terror is racing through my veins. This uncomfortable feeling only grows stronger as I explore further down the path. This one. I replace the bloodstained spider lily in the fox's mouth with a blue spider lily. The malicious spiritual phenomenon in this place has subsided. At the end of the hidden path, I find the grounds of a shrine, surrounded by trees. Like the shrine of the main path, which was completely gone, crumbling remnants of this shrine remain. This is the main shrine, the Mushikabi Shrine. Zippin was born in this land. <laughs> I 
I feel the blood drain from my face when I hear that admonishing tone. The same voice I heard at the forest centers and at the tomb. Will we uncover the owner of that voice if we investigate this place? Mm hmm. Hmm. The crumbling shrine's remains are at the back of the grounds. The darkness of the wood makes it apparent that this shrine was built a long time ago. Yeah, this place really is Mushikami Shrine. The Depard's wedding took place here, right? Yeah. Here where Mushigami and Kamigami were enshrined. The chosen bride and groom held a sacred wedding as they wished for the famine in town to end. You've probably guessed it, Yashiki, but... Doesn't seem likely that the Depard has latched the spirit of the bride. They're obsessed with marriage. They must be tied to the wedding ritual. My guess is... Something happened in the ritual that has a source of a grunge. That makes a lot of sense. That being said, we need to learn what happened in this place. We'll never be able to exterminate the departed unless we learn the truth of what happened in the past and the origin of her resentment. Let's hope there are some clues left. Hope. No, make me laugh. Here's some words of wisdom for you. Truth is something you should reel in with brute force. Okay, Shadow. When I take a closer look at the ruined shrine, I notice there's something buried in there. Is that a wooden box? Going inside the collector is a risky proposition. What should I do? You are the man, brute force. Much I'm going to get that wooden box. Seriously? I'll go get. With your reflexes, you'll be trapped in there if the roof collapses. Much steps in the shrine via a gap in the fallen roof. Cautiously avoiding the decaying pillars and floor, he proceeds slowly. So, like what Amy mentioned earlier, I think the bride and groom are sacrifices, or just the bride. And the departed is the spirit of all the brides. Oh, you're right, Mashita. Quit making a fuss over nothing. I just hit my hand. Okay, this is the one you wanted, right? Mashita returns with a Polonia box in hand. He then puts it down on the ground. Hey, was that always on behind your back when you were out here? This is the only thing that stood out to me. Everything else in there is just the broken pots and altars. Hurry up and open it, Yashiki. Maybe. Hmm. Is it the box or a vermilion ink palette and a bundle of paper? Well, the ink might be old. The container was sealed, so it should still be usable. The paper's yellowing, so it must have been down there for quite a long time. There are some red stains on it as well. Those look more like blood than ink, though. <laughs> There's something written on the paper. Read it. I can't read it quickly. It's written in an old script, and I can't make it out. You better have Yasuoka do it. The hell? You're just gonna keep me in suspense! How about the stuff on the first three papers? Aren't those names? Fine, I'll read it. Mushigami Groom, Head. Kabigami Groom, Head. The part mentioning heads is stained with blood, making it difficult to decipher. The heck is that head part? No idea. I'll read the second and third sheets. Well, the brides don't say head. Michio. Mikiko. Hold on here, Mate, Mushikabi Shrine Priest. Uchita Izumi. Ah, Izumi! There are thumbprints next to the three names. That's what the vermilion ink must have been used for. The priest's last name is Izumi. Is that just a coincidence? Mikiko Mayumura and Michio Mayumura. Are they the brides for the Departs wedding? This ceremony is a genesis of the Departs resentment. One of them might have died a horrible death, and become the Departan. Which one of them, then? Both? No, your resentment. With us. With us brides.
the departed ceremony. Rem Remember this is an important duty. Everything shall go smoothly. I right, finished with the toolbox. Next, I'm preparing for the wedding. I'm pretty sure they just beheaded someone. No, stop. Big sis, I'm afraid. A vision is projecting into my mind. Okay, they take the heads of the grooms. I mean, we saw that part. And then they infect the brides with either the mushrooms or the bugs. Some women are holding two on two women in a dimly lit room. Those men are putting horrifying insects and mold on the bodies of two women. And in the back, there's a small offering stand with the heads of two men placed upon it. <laughs> now here's the other thing. Remember, Doryu was saying that Michiho's like a little sister to her or something. They were like siblings. Remember that part. The woman let out pain groans. Keep your makeup on now. The men continue to apply the disgusting makeup in silence. The woman on the left is covered in mold, while the one on the right is riddled with bugs. Her porcelain skin has been made filthy. The woman screams and contort. However, the men prevent them from escaping. Do not struggle. Do not scream. You stand on essential for the ceremony. Hours, days, weeks from now, we shall paint you with the color of bugs and molds so you shall be suitable brides for the deities. You're lying. Her voice is mixed with pain and anger. And yet her words don't register of the men at all. There's a the smear bugs and mold onto them with expressionless faces. Spend your days covered in bugs and mold. Eating bugs and mold. Your organs shall be infused with mold, and the cavities in your body shall be filled with insects. It'll be as if you have to part from this world. Lord Mushigami and Lord Kabigami should be delighted to see how beautiful their brides are. So the two sisters become the ghosts. We're alive, yet we're rotting. Our porcelain skin turns black as mold. Our hair becomes the color of a silkworm's cocoon. So, the tattoo on the what's her name, Doryu? That is the mold. She's the mold girl. And then, what's her name gets the white hair. It's like silkworms. She's the, the bug girl, the bug sister. And she also wears the little bug uh, earrings and stuff. The suffering is a pledge of a happy couple. So they tell this couple like what's going on? Like apparently not. They just take them on like you gotta get buried and they just nail them. This isn't the pledge I hoped for. Yeah, see? I shall never forget this. Everyone in this village. Even if I die and become the departed. I shall kill you. I shall put a curse upon you. As my vision starts to blur, I regain my senses. Her, my breathing is ragged and my body is trembling uncontrollably. I felt this intense loathing flowing through me when the vision came in. It's all their fault. Hey, why are you shaking so much? What happened? Mashida, I... I think I know the origin of the departed's resentment. What did you say? Mashida, don't turn around. 
The Departed. Since when did you get here? Like an insect, the Departed wriggles are way closer. It's like the time when I killed Michiho. But why are they here? Does this place really hold meaning for them? My dear husband. Despite the transformation, their nickname for me remains the same. As well as their obsession toward me. The Departed. Forcing myself to suppress my fear, I propel my words out of my mouth. There's something I want to ask them. You. Were you killed here? Were you killed here? So you saw... You saw the ugly part of me. Were you... By your more on your past life. Forget the ugly me. I shall be more beautiful soon. For you, dear husband. Do you still regret what happened? I can help you dispel it. Cut that shit out, Yashiki! Don't talk with the dead or you'll be dragged to the world! Thanks, Mashida. For frack's sake, are you trying to get yourself killed? Get your shit together and prepare yourself. Got it. Okay. <coughs> what? I am the one who should be staying next to my husband. Masha, to run! You are a hindrance. Masha clutches his chest as he lets out a painful groan. I think going after Mashita. Mashita! Fuck. They're really messing with me. The Depart harbors hostile feelings towards Mashita. Mashita will be in danger if we confront the Depart now. Then again, our opponent for this battle is Departed. There's no way we'll be able to run away from them easily. If we're gonna run away, I need to create an opening. Blat blat. Yes, you will face them. Pell normal cop. Can we do it together, Mashida? <sighs> Fine. Mashida pulls out his gun and I grab the gun from the suspicious bag. We try shooting the departed. There's no guarantee the gun will have any effect on the departed. Well, the Renzi crowbar did. Putting our guns at the Departed's huge body, we swiftly pull our triggers. Blap, blap. Pell normal cop. The bullet seems to hit the Departed's body. Nice one. They might like me a lot, but maybe that love isn't strong enough to survive an attack. Dear. Husband. The Departed sounds sad and their breathing becomes unsteady. That seems to have made them feel a bit uneasy. I think this is the right choice. Did you do something bad in your past life, or what? This shit is clearly head over heels in love with you. I guess they are. Duh. What's this bastard trying to be sexy for? The Departed fiercely shrieks after hearing Mashida's insult. Okay. Then they slowly approach us. The Departed can't maintain their composure. That causes the thing hidden behind their huge body, something resembling a face to become exposed. Damn. We managed to get them riled up, but now they're closing in. True. Except their target's apparently me. When the time comes, I'll lure them to me. Use that chance to escape. That's madness. If we do that, you will... We need to create an opening to escape. Shoot the face. Yes, you face that. Can we do it together, Mashita? Fine. Mashita pulls out his gun and I grab the gun from the suspicious bang. Try to game at the Depart's face. We'll have our shots at the Depart's face and pull the trigger simultaneously. 
blap, blap. The bullet seems to hit the departed in what appears to be their face. Nice shot. I can't imagine anything that would set someone off more than being hit in the face, especially by their beloved. The departed is a, a pop electric. They scream in rage. I want to make them really distraught, but I think I pissed them off instead. However... What? What's happening? Able to control their emotions, the part lets out a scream that pierces the sky. They stagger backward, trying to hide their face. Dear. Husband. Liar. Usuda. God damn it. It's not about some crazy mood swings, huh? Well, I think we managed to provoke them. Looks like this is the right choice. All right, this is our chance to run away. Time to go. True. But we should split up to make sure that at least one of us gets out of here. But... No time to complain. Just do it. I'll cut through the forest. You follow the path. Understood. Before I can even reply, Mashita has already run into the woods, avoiding the departed. <laughs> About seeing that, the departed shrieks in rage. <laughs> Chasing after Mashita, they disappear into the woods. You best run like hell. The departed and Mashita have vanished. A sense of hopelessness and loss swell up inside me anew. Again, I was powerless to do anything. Mashita. Yeah. Oh, there it is. The sound in this presence. The female doll is standing as she always does. I press back here near the clock tower. Hurry, run away. It's all over the school, you, everyone. Attacked by Mushikami, bitten by them, Enin. Like us. What do you mean by like us? Do you remember? That day, we were eaten by Mushikami. We became one. Mushikami, scary, scary. Wait, what did she say just now? They were bitten by Mushikami. <laughs> Don't tell me this doll is. But is it really? None of the intense hatred I felt earlier is coming from this doll. Instead, I sense confusion and fear. I'm begging you, please tell me. Who are you? I... We... The spell sound is... Ah! The female doll screams and disappears. They're the same person! They're two halves of the departed. It's... Yeah, the, the doll is the... The physical... Kind of beacon... Of them in this world. But also representing their... Good side. I recall what she just said. It's all over. The school you, everyone. You'll be attacked by Mushikabi. Been by them, Eden. Well, the every end is the wrath and also the the actual gods. It sounds really ominous. What does it mean? I have a bad feeling about this. Bring it back to the infirmary immediately. What? What in the world? Even the lights in the special building have turned red. Is it the same for the infirmary? A 
as I feared the infirmary is also bathed in red light. And the two people who had left here are nowhere to be found. Toyu! Yasuoka! Toyu took Yasuoka away, because we left Doryu with them. There's no response. As the Depart come here again. That time the Depart left a notice targeting the student council on the desk. And given previous events... I knew it. There's another notice from them. It's gonna be me. The spirit doctor. The notice of the Depart sent her a testament candidate for her husband. Except they already considered me their real husband. How else do they want to test me now? Dear husband, the day of the exchange of vows has arrived. I should be winning for you under the oath bell. Please come after you count one, two, three, four, five. After that, in the red wedding hall, please call the name of your bride who is hiding in school. Your beloved the departed. The which two and four ran upside down. Exchange of vows, oath bell, ceremony hall. Do these phrases refer to a wedding ceremony? Wait, that voice. Yasuoka. Yasuoka! I rush over and find Yasuoka lying under the bed. She's unconscious, but she doesn't appear to have sustained any injuries. Hang in there, Yasuoka. Yasuki. Are you alright? Yes, more or less. What in the world happened to you? I don't know. I was talking to Doryu. And then suddenly my head starts spinning and I just lost consciousness. Where's Doryu? My apologies, I don't know. Perhaps she has been taken by the departed, like I and Sho. Doryu. I have to hurry and look for her. But I'll only be killed if I chase after the departed now. I'll die a pointless death without saving anyone. This will be a battle against the departed. And there's a key to clear their grudge. I'll only stand a chance against them if I can find that key. I need to calm down. I should show Yasuko the paper bundles I retrieved from the forest that I couldn't read. There might be clues in them. You look like you have many things that you want to talk about. I know you're anxious and impatient right now. But can you please just tell me what happened? Watch this disappearance. Where is Mashita, by the way? Why are you alone? Uh, about that. I tell her about how the Depart targeted Mashita and they both disappeared. Oh, I see. Because of me, Mashita is. Do not blame yourself. Mashita was simply living life according to his own rules. He shouldn't have any regrets. What rules? To live a life of an officer. Even after he quit, he couldn't run away from his destiny. Mashita's a tenacious man who would do anything to solve a case. Despite that, he never allowed himself to forget his past life as a cop. Those were his rules. Then that means... I get it, Mashita. I'll give it my all and focus on solving this case. That's what you want, right? Red light's in special building. Yasuoka, when did the light here turn red? I notice it as I start to lose consciousness. The Departed's curse seems to have enveloped the entire school. This is the worst. We don't know what'll happen. But why now? If the cause is the same as last time, perhaps the Departed is transformed again. That means... Did they consume something again? Possibly. What did they consume then? Say, Yasuoka. Can you decipher these papers for me? I believe this is about the Departed's wedding, but it's an old script. And I'm sure this has something to do with the Departed's grudge. Sure. There's not much here, so it shouldn't take long. Wait a spell. I tend to calm myself down while Yasoko reads. In the meantime, I'll organize all the information I got in the forest. I might find out the truth about the Departed. The Departed's Wedding. A secret wedding ceremony that was held in an attempt to end the famine. The brides and grooms were carefully selected based on their intelligence, lineage, personality, and spiritual strength. Which is why the Chosen Ones were thought to be blessed and envied by many. The truth is those Chosen Brides and Grooms actually believed they'd have a blissful marriage. 
The two chosen brides were Mayamoros, they were obviously sisters. Or in one beautiful night, the gorgeous bridal procession advanced deep into the forest. They were headed toward Mushakabi Shrine. However, the marriage so many held at that place was far from the happy occasion they wished for. Instead of marrying their grooms, the brides were paired with the deities Mushigami and Kabigami. Before their beheaded grooms, they were prepared for their wedding to the deities. That preparation included being given a makeover of bugs and mold. Over time, their skins were consumed by insects and mold. To keep themselves alive, they consumed both the insects and the mold. And that's how the women who resembled corpses remained worthy of becoming brides of deities. For a long, long time, they had to suffer with bugs and mold slowly eating away at their bodies. A brutal betrayal for brides who were deceived into thinking they were destined for a happy marriage. Such an incident is cruel enough to have borne myriad of grudges. I'm done reading. As you presume, this was indeed about the departed's wedding. I shall give you a summary. I write down what Yasuko says in my notebook. Okay, the groom's head. Ikiko Michio Mayamura. Shrine Priest Izumi, six others. To know about the religious oaths and departs winning for grooms, bride, and priests. Looks like the rest of the town forgot the ceremony procedures given that it had been a hundred years since it was last held. The chief priest of the Mushikabi Shrine secretly wrote this memo for them. In the wedding ceremony M Town, the two grooms shall present their brides with red threads. It's realistic on their teeth. The ceremony is unique to M Town, where silkworm and sapphire flourish. Previous brides have been overjoyed to be proposed in a traditional way. However, the departs wedding is different. Instead of the grooms, Mushigami and Kabigami, men from the town, shall present the brides with insects instead of red threads, and smear mold upon them instead of lipstick. This profoundful ceremony shall last for several days, during this time the brides shall eat bugs and mold to survive. Their bodies shall continue to be consumed by the insects and mold until they have turned into the departed, but it's wary of wedding the deities. Yes, because some of the papers confirms why I saw the vision. I already know what to do now, based on the, uh... You gotta do the wedding, but the original version, with the, the string and the teeth. Well, I've only learned my, maybe half the truth of the situation. That much is enough to make my skin crawl and my stomach wretch. Remember, paint the blue red? Or whatever it was? I said everything I wanted to say to Yasuoka. And with that, I have all the keys that I can possibly prepare. I don't know if this will be enough to battle against the Departed's enormous resentment. But still... Are you going, Yashige? Yeah, the Departed is calling me. I have to bring an end to this night. As much as I want to come along with you, I'm afraid I would only get in your way. My feet have been hurting after I fainted. I'm unable to run in my condition. It's fine, you can stay here. If I fail to come back, please take care of the rest for me. Understood. Do you know where the Departed is? It's written in the notice. The clock tower. Right below the oath bell. I see. Hear me out, Yashiki. Mashita risked his life for you. As did I show Diamond a hero. Everyone wanted to help you out. That is what they believed. Favor is a weapon to battle against fear, and that's how they were able to challenge those spirits. You're right. It's thanks to them that I'm here at this critical moment. So, Yashiki, you risk your life to pursue these spirits. But what drives you to do it? My motivation. So then we talk of a sense of responsibility or obligation. Tell me what you hope to accomplish by hunting spirits. What made me start chasing spirits? Initially it was because I didn't want to die. Four months ago I pursued spirits to escape death. I managed to save the souls of those spirits and I survived. That should have been the end of my dealings with spirits. Except it wasn't. I continued pursuing them, entering the fear and putting my life on the line. Why did I do that? I can only think of one answer.
I just can't ignore those who have stepped into darkness. Not only those who are targeted by spirits, but the spirits who are bound by their regrets who also want to be saved. I simply want to do what I can do to help them. So you want to save everyone? Yeah. I'm not a saint. I know I can't save everyone. But I want to reach out my hand as far as I can and as many as I can. I don't care if that makes me sound like a hypocrite of a martyr complex. <laughs> you sound like a doctor. A spirit doctor. Maybe because I'm the spirit doctor. In that case, you should hang on to that hypocr hypocrisy. So that everyone, both the living and the dead, can be saved and rest peacefully. Yeah. Oh, the music keeps playing. Look at that. Let's go. No more oh okay. Now it's oh alright. It's time to go to the clock tower. The departed awaits. The clock tower. The department must be waiting inside to exchange vows with their groom, me. Once I step inside here, this case is coming to some kind of a conclusion. Though there is some one matter left I need to resolve before I enter this place. And that is the true identity of the departed, who has been hiding here in the Konehara Academy. In the Red Wedding Hall, please call the name of your bride who is hiding in the school. I mean, the notice, it seems like they want an answer. I won't have time to think about this once I'm inside, so now's the only time I'll have to think it over. Shall we solve the Depard's mystery? First of all, I have some speculations about their identity. About a hundred years ago, there were brides who were brutally murdered during a wedding ceremony in M-Town. Harboring grudges against all the residents while still longing for marriage, they were devoured by insects and mold. Their enormous grudges turned them into the departed. That much we know. Now the real question is, how did the departed hide in the school? Toshihiko Izumi said the departed was pretending to be a human. If he was telling the truth, I have a feeling they transformed into someone I know. They'd want to observe their groom, me, from nearby. People at Konehara Kemi who interacted with me. Many of them were victims in the spirit cases. Naomi Horikoshi, Shinichi Kakuda, Rutsu Sakamoto. They're no longer here. I couldn't protect them. The ones who are still alive are the headmasters Seizo Konoe, Himeko Doryu, Haraki Abe, and Saki Maruhashi. And Michiho Kirukawa, whose status is unknown. Michio died at the clock tower last night. But if she was a departed, her death would not prove her innocence. There's also the matter of the things we know inside her dorm room. There's clearly something odd about that room. It's safe to say Michio Kirukawa is a prime suspect. Let's start deducing now. Assuming that the part is among the ones still alive, we can exclude Mr. Kono and Abe. The part is said to be a bride, and the ones who hold the grudge are female, so it stands the reason that they transform into a girl. This is still just conjecture, obviously. But without solid evidence, I'm going to have to make some assumptions and narrow down the suspects to the most likely candidates. What about Maruhashi? Nah, I didn't meet her until Mr. Kokuri's case. Before that, the Depart attacked both I and Sho after learning about my friendship with them. Marahashi doesn't know that they're my friends, so the chance of her being the Departed is slim. Doryu is rather suspicious. To give her with Michiho, she's been helping me from the very beginning. Additionally, she knows all about the case and is quite interested in me. We can assume Himiko Doryu is a suspect. This is just a possibility, but... If Michiho or Doryu are the Departed, the smiles when they called my name and when they told me they believed in me. It all came from the dead. 
that reality would be a bitter pill to swallow. Haha, <laughs> no one believes in you. However, there's still another possibility. And that's the fact that Izumi might not have been telling the truth. Izumi was going insane at that time. He might have not intended to lie. But that's not to say that he didn't lie either. If we consider that possibility... The female doll would seem suspicious. We were eaten by Mukishikami. Her last words match the ritual scene I saw in my mind. Especially because the word we could refer to the two brides. Two souls with the same resentment turned into a single spirit. And that spirit is departed. The possibility is there. We can assume the female doll is also a suspect. Unlike a detective novel or police drama, we're not just going to turn up def definitive evidence in a spirit case like this. Despite that, I still have to make a choice. Among the three likely candidates, which is the departed? I can't afford to make a mistake. Micho Kinokawa is the departed. Miyamiko Doryu is the departed. The female doll is not the departed. Miyamiko and Doryu are the departed, not the female dolls. This is my final answer. I think that's my final answer for the million dollars. I know my answer. Tend to go to the clock tower. Everything will be clear there. If I like it or not. The door to the clock tower is open. The departed is waiting for me up ahead. I can't even imagine what will happen next. I inhale the clear night air and breathe it out. And I push the door open. Uh, I don't need a hand. What in the world? The red handprints all over the wall. The red mold, not blood. It's been mold that's on the notices. The tower wasn't like this before. The clock tower has changed. This is also the work of the departed. Ah. What is this dreadful sensation filling the air? The power of the curse is overwhelming. I have to put an end to it quickly. One arm shaped clump of red mold is emerging from the wall. Two arm shaped clumps of red mold are emerging from the wall. Your arm shift because of one of the wall. Up. Down. What's that? Something's rolling on the floor. This is. Not the first doll we've seen shattered in this world. The broken remains of the female doll. But how? What happened? With the pain from the curse and the agitation of the surprise, my head's about to burst. Calm down. Just calm your ass down. So I say to myself over and over again, that I inspect the broken female doll. Her limbs are missing, only her head, dress, and some broken pieces remain. When I look closely at the broken pieces, I see something resembling teeth marks. This is most likely from a bite. Was she devoured by the departed? The departed grew strong after devouring the doll, which turned the lights in the special building red. It does make sense.
I hear a faint voice. This is the doll's voice. Take me. Eat me? What do you want me to, what do you want to say? Eat? Me. Protect you. Because a doll is, uh, protects a thing for the spirit. I'm red. Curse. Her voice goes silent. What did the female doll say? Take me. Eat me to protect you from the red curse. I still don't get it, however, this doll mustered all of her remaining strength just to say that to me. So I can't ignore her words. I better take her corpse with me. The malicious disturbance that was happening in this place has subsided. It makes me feel a little bit better. This is all thanks to this female doll. The departed harbors a massive grudge while also longing to exchange vows with their groom. A document I found on M Town's ceremony mentions that the etiquette and tools used all have great significance. I need to remember all this in case some trivial thing can be used against the departed. The female doll's last words concern me. She told me to bring her to protect myself. What does she mean by the red curse and eat me? Do I really have to? Nothing makes sense. So much is at stake. Who do I believe? Who do I doubt? Time's running out. I have to make a decision. The fragments of the female doll are scared on the floor. You need to protect you from the red curse. What does it mean? I cut the ladder once again. When will this ladder take me this time? Will I end up climbing the, long t climbing the clock tower for all eternity without an exit? My mind conjures up numerous ominous predictions like this one after another. Except I know that can't be how this ends. What the Depart wants is a wedding ceremony. And a groom is needed for that to happen. I guess his ladder is like a vertical wedding aisle. And waiting for me at the end will be... My bride. Kind of romantic in a way. I find myself in a bright red room. The stone walls and floors are covered with red mold. There are strange plants growing on the floor that look like overgrown moss. I'm hoping that the part has another form, because I think of that the form we're seeing is the final form. That's a little. The final forms for the ever uh, climaxes from this series are a little bit better than a sight that you will never see in nature. Did the depart cause this paranormal phenomena? There's an altar in the middle of the room. It's an altar that would be the center of the Western style wedding. This will be the end of my walk down the aisle then. I take the Noah's out and check it. Please come after you count one, two, three, four, five. Then the red wedding hall, please call the name of your bride who's hiding in the school. The Red Wedding Hall, please call the name of your bride who is hiding in school. This place must be the Red Wedding Hall. I should call the Depart by the name of they've been using at school. Right, the very name I have guessed. I wonder if there's a reason why they want me to call them by their name here. Perhaps the Depart wishes to have a groom that really knows every single thing about his bride. Everything, even their terrifying secrets. The party who has been hiding in Kone Arakami, your real name is... Michio Kinukawa and Himeko Doryu. My voice echoes throughout the room. There's no answer at all, only heavy sounds filling the air. I expected nothing less of you, my dear husband. I believed in you. Two for the price of one, apparently. Two people appear before my eyes. Doryu. Michio. 
I was hoping I was wrong. However, my guess was on the mark. The deaf mark. Dear husband, we've been watching you while hiding in the school the whole time. Dear husband, we tested you to see if you're worthy of being our real husband or not. Both of them sound dead. Their eyes are lifeless. They don't look like the Doryu and Michiho I came to know. You two are. The Departed's brides. The Mayumura sisters. Mikiko and Michio Mayamura. Right, sisters. It was the key to unlocking the truth. But the Departed wasn't just one entity hiding at the school, it was two. I had proof that Michiho was the Departed, which meant that the person who received the curse at the same time would also be the Departed. Doryu. Bearing that mark on her face is displaying the evidence that she's indeed the Departed as well. Then, are you the ones who caused all those spirits to appear? That is correct. So the spirit I saw clean in Doryu's back was fake. The groom only needs his bride. The bride only needs her groom. Everyone else is unnecessary. If they're allowed to keep using the dead to cause more casualties, the damage will be incalculable as the victims become new spirits. More and more people will die until the bride and groom are all that remain. That's the ending the departed desires. I have to stop this twisted madness at any cost. Dear husband, you have shown us your brilliant intelligence. You managed to learn the truth about us without being deceived by sympathy or fake deaths. Dear husband, you have shown us your impeccable lineage. Due to your bloodline, you were able to see, hear, and face the spirits. Dear husband, you have shown us your stunning personality. Having formed an emotional bond with us brides, you must have the courage to push through your fear for us. You're not like those weak, fragile, beheaded men, or the coward who fled from the notice. You're different from those fake grooms. Dear heavens, you truly are our real husband. What are you going to do to me? We are the departed's bride and groom. Let us exchange our marriage vows in this red wedding hall, and spend our days in this Mushikabi chamber forever after. That is the happy ending we long for. But, Mikiko, dear husband, looks delicious. Michiho! I can't control myself anymore. Dear husband. No! Can I bite you? Okay. Michio's face changes before my eyes. How terrifying. This is the part's true form. Bug. Then... Mold. Wanna bite? Wanna bite husband? Every time she speaks, the insects coming out of her mouth move their legs. What is that black liquid dripping from her mouth? Is that her saliva? Does she see me as food? In more ways than one. I'm completely disoriented. My mind can't process everything before me. I feel like the last friend friend of my sanity is going to snap. Do not rush, Michio. We must exchange vows first. Days, weeks, and months from now, our husband's body shall be dyed in Mushikabi's color. His organs shall be infested with mold and he'll be filled with insects, making him beautiful. We need to wait until that time, alright? Ada, bite, bite! What troublesome child. <laughs> Dear husband, you are a bad man. Because you really do look delicious. No! Dear husband. Can I bite you? You know this is the third time that something has won to both love and eat Yoshiki? The mark Doji's face starts spreading like mold, distorting her face. Is that unsightly look in her face supposed to be joy? I'm quaking in fear just looking at her. I came to muster a scream. Want to bite. Want to bite. I think Yashiki must be the most tasty person in the world. They can no longer control the ravenous hunger. The figures of the two brides who long for a wedding are no longer here. Instead, what I'm seeing now are two long dead spirits who are warped by madness. 
Mikiko, shall we bite him together? No. Michio, let us bite him together. Do you and Michio look at each other? Then they hug one another. Hmm. Their arms and legs are intertwined, body pressing its body, sticking like glue. Hmm. And they're repeating the same motion several times. The bounding between the two disappears and they unite in one. Look, dear husband. Look at us. We've consumed the Scarlet Marionette. Hmm. Yeah, but it is, if it just stays that final form, I'll be a little disappointed. No, oh, okay, they're transforming. I was gonna say. When the candlestick is relit. <laughs> Dear husband, am I beautiful now? No. Oh. You're a little bit better when you were just like the students with the weird twisted bug face. <laughs> the mind and body overwhelmed by fear. I get my toe being hypnotized by a servant. The departed has gained a new form from the swirling red mold. Grotesque looking demon coming out of a doll's bulging belly. I can feel her intense emotion as her four eyes stare me down. And that motion is desire. The scarlet desire to devour their beloved, now show them to their demise. Can I. Is it even possible to save them? Dear husband, let me bathe all of you in the color of insects. Bugs! I've let them insects issue forth from their mouth and assault me. This keeps up. I'll be eaten alive by bugs. But I can't give up here. What should I do? Frog anti insects. I hope to try to frog to cover myself from the attacking bugs. I hope to drive a frog in front of me. The moment I lay my hand on the frog, I remember what that voice told me earlier. Frogs drive away bugs. This might work then. The part sneers at the insects as the insects pour forth an attack. But then the insects disperse into the darkness to avoid the frog. Looks like this is the right choice. The part shrieks in anger upon seeing the insects leave. It seems to be muttering something. What the heck are they saying? Bugs? No, is it mold? Just as I think that to myself, a sharp pain runs around my arm. Red. The mold starts growing my arm. <sighs> so now they're gonna with mold on. I can feel the mold spreading throughout my body. I feel like vomiting. The husband, let me bathe in the color of mold. I can consume the mold at this rate. No time to sit around. I need to do something before this damn mold comes my whole body. So I don't really have an idea of what I need to do. Let's believe there are clues somewhere, because if I don't do something, I'll be dead. Yosh. Yosh. 
Grabbing that female doll's head, I try eating a piece of it. The more I lay my hand on the doll's broken remains. I remember what that voice said at that time. He didn't protect you from the red curse. A little bit nervous, I rarely take a bite of the female doll's head. It's an unpleasant sensation like I'm chewing on a stone. And the clay texture and taste start to spread inside my mouth. Making my mind I swallow it down. That moment. With the mold and the unpleasant nausea disappear in an instant. Looks like this is the right choice. The depart sounds distraught after seeing both the insects and mold cleared away. They got a roar, they approach me. Are they gonna eat me now? No, you can't bite me. I bite you. Here we go again. The department will never be satisfied until they kill me. Although, if the Mayumura sisters are the departed, do they really want my death? The Mayumura sisters long for a blissful marriage. Tell me. This bloody ritual can't be the dream wedding you always wanted. What is that you really want? Dear husband. Is that their answer? They sound sad. Right at that moment I hear something distinct from the darkness surrounding my vision. Give it back. That voice just now. But give it back to you mean... Shine, it's not working, huh? I'm pretty sure the voice just now wants to depart its true feelings, but they've returned to being their mad monster form. No. I guess you really can't communicate with his spirit, huh? At least I've got a clue now. I might be able to save the Depart's soul using that clue. There's something I need to give back to them. It's probably something used in a celebration, given that this is a wedding. Present the red dress to the departed. When the dress with both hands, I get down on the knees and offer to the departed. I shall give you this dress. Really, a friend, give. The departed mother something with a smile. Did they just tell me to give them Vermilion Fred? I'm pretty sure this dress is made of red silk thread, so it should fit the bill. Is this a standard custom during a real wedding? Is this the celebration you want? The departed stares at me in silence. They seem somewhat bewildered. I guess this is the evidence I've stirred something in their heart. Looks like this is the right choice. The departed takes a slow, deep breath. Perhaps the departed longs to experience a traditional M-Town wedding ceremony. Remember the true vows you long for. The part starts breathing heavily. That took a memory or something. They got a roar, they approach me. Can I bite you? Bite, 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 bite. Shut, I guess that's not it. The part has gone insane once again. On the verge of devouring me. However, there's no way I can give up here. Thank damn it, there must still be something I can do. What the part probably wants is a traditional winning. I believe the group usually gives something to their bride. But still not enough, what should I do? Yes. 
I hope the Vermilion ink container will apply it to the parts teeth. To be my finger into the Vermilion ink, I call it up to the departed. Let us exchange our wedding vows. Let me paint your teeth red. I feel like the departed is as deranged as they were before. Now's the time. I nervously extend the fingers I've coated with vermilion ink toward the departed. This is what's written in the chief priest's note I found the Mushikabi Shrine. At wedding ceremonies in M-Town, the groom is supposed to give the bride vermilion friend and paint her teeth red. Only M-Town brides were overjoyed to be on the receiving end of this traditional practice. See, what I've got, a dress made of red silk thread would be equipped to giving the bride vermilion thread. And smearing red ink on their teeth aligns with painting their teeth red with lipstick. So if I were to do that now, I'd gently smear the vermilion ink on the departed's teeth, giving them a blessing. The departed. This is a blessing that I, your groom, give to you. My bride. After a long silence, her lips curve into a smile. Then... Dear husband, for so long... For so, so long... For... You... You're wondering such a thing. The Depart disappears with a cry that is oddly neither filled with love nor hatred. Like this is the right choice. This should be good. Or is it? The departed regain their lost blessings so they can finally rest in peace. I really hope that's the case. However, a cold wind refuses to stop blowing for the gaping hole in my heart. Doryu, Michio. For a while, I simply stand rooted to this spot, stunned and distraught. Then I think about the way those girls simply disappeared without regaining their consciousness. I remember the look on their faces when that happened. They were smiling for some reason. It's time to go. Now that I've managed to survive this ordeal somehow, there's some things that I must do. As I descend, I notice that the red handprints on the wall have now vanished. I assume that all the other strange phenomena have ceased after the depart's departure. The clock tower is frozen in time, but the hands won't move ever again. Because the two students who wanted to make that happen for the school 70th anniversary are no longer with us. I better get out of here. And so it goes waiting for me. The vengeful Mayamura sisters who took Michiho and Doryu's bodies were the culprits. They longed for a happy marriage with their chosen groom even after death. Well, I can't be their real husband. I hope the red thread and lipstick were enough to fulfill their wishes. Oh, you were actually married. The girls in my vision were school age. Were they able to wash away some of their resentment after experiencing their stolen youth? As a spirit doctor, I like to believe I set them free from their curse. I hope their smiles before they fleet is the answer to my question. I shall let Yasuoka know how this case ended. Welcome back, Yashiki. The spirit that was possessing Yasuoka is gone now, and the line of the firmary is no longer red. Is it over? Yeah. You did well. Where's Doryu? Yashiki? Yasuoka looks at me with gentle eyes. 
She then follows with a slight knowing nod. Things happen, I see. Just tell me wherever you're ready, no rush. I'm sorry. Mashita, want me to answer that? No, it's fine, I'll do it. Hello? <sighs> Try being a little bit more cheery, will ya? There's a annoyed tone in these harsh words. You're alive, Mashita! Yep, I failed to die. I lost my phone, so I couldn't call. Took me a while to find a working public phone. Thank God you managed to escape. I was sprinting for that damn force so hard, I wanted to puke the whole time. They almost caught my ass several times. Lucky for me, they disappeared midway through the chase. They probably decided to go be with their husband rather than playing tag with me. How did it go on your end? It's over. The part has vanished. Oh, okay then. Did you save the departed? I think so. I think I did. Then why do you sound like you're at a funeral? Perk the frack up, man. Mission accomplished. You should be proud of yourself. Nobody thinks you're cruel for doing what needs to be done. Sorry, but I'm not really in the mood for that. Yeah, not surprised at all. I'm heading there now. Give me the details once I'm there. Bye. That was Mashita, wasn't it? I'm glad he's safe and sound. That man is too stubborn to die. He said he's coming here. Shall we leave once he arrives then? You should rest, Yashiki. I'll contact the headmaster for you. Thanks, Yasuoka. I'm touched by Yasuoka's thoughtfulness. Since the last scene is still so vivid in my mind, I don't think I can deliver a professional report to the headmaster right now. By the way, Yashiki, why are you holding on to that? Oh, you mean this? I didn't even realize it, but I'm clutching something I picked up in the clock tower. It's the female doll's head and dress. They saved my life. There's no particular reason. Maybe I'm just feeling sentimental. Great, another doll at our mansion. Because Mary is still in there. If I remember correctly, Mary is like slowly regenerating. その世誰もいない学園から鳴り響く鐘を何人かの近隣住民が耳にした姫子と道子それぞれの死をSo now we get the ever endings. And I think there's also. No, oh, there's credits. Probably gonna be something after the uh, credits.
ることのない過去にこだわり続け破滅の深淵へと沈む今にも閉ざされそうな光の輪に追いすがりかすれる声で許しを心が触らう信じ抜く力を汚したくない A week has passed since that night. Konohara came asking change much since my first visit. Though this is the only calm before the storm. Even though the spirit has vanished, the truth and the havoc they wrought still remain. Weekly magazines alike have been littered with articles about mysterious disappearances at the H City School. It's only a matter of time before the press descends upon the school. When that happens, students will lose their normality once again. But there's nothing I can do about that. I walk past the students and enter the school. Unlike my first visit here, the bell doesn't ring. Oh, you're here, Yashiki. Apologies, I've been quite busy lately. I've had my hands full of parents and police asking for explanations about the students that we have disappeared. Though all I can do is tell them that I don't know anything more than they do. And so I get called an irresponsible headmaster. <laughs> 
Quite a few people have gone missing in a short amount of time, and yet we can't share what actually transpired. Being thrust into a limbo between reality and the spirit world, he's got a pretty tough situation. Sooner or later, I'll likely have to resign. Someone will be made to bear responsibility for these incidents. I've got no regrets, so the case is solved, and I can hold my head high knowing what happened. Mr. Konoe. I've read your report. You feel absolutely terrible for Sakamoto. And I can't believe Doryu and Kunikawa were actually departed. I have no intention of revealing the truth, honestly. It's not like that would outlay the concerns of anyone. We shall consider them the missing persons, like Sakamoto and the others. And that should be fine. The real versions of them are victims, too. Naturally. I was curious to why the depart pretend to be Doryu and Kinokawa in order to hide among the students. There doesn't seem to be a need to mingle with everyone here in order to simply find a husband. I don't know either. There are a number of things concerning the depart that still don't make any sense to me. Such as why are they in the clock tower? Hmm. Maybe you'll get a bit more closure about that matter if you read this. He proceeds to hand me a lever journal from the nearby desk. This journal belonged to my grandfather in the third headmaster of Konohara Academy. A relative found this at their home and sent it my way. I know now isn't exactly an ideal time for you to see this, but feel free to take your time looking over. Thanks, I'll borrow this in. I guess it's all for me. But let me thank you one last time. I appreciate all your help, Yashiki. You helped me save Konohara Academy. I also want to extend my sincere apologies for being harsh with you. Oh, don't worry about that. I know you were desperate to save both the school and the students. I'm glad you understand. That reminds me, Diamond will be here today. Why don't you go talk to him? Sure thing. I say goodbye to Mr. Kona and leave the faculty room. Diamond has been waiting in the infirmary. Long time now see, Ashiki. So, how are you feeling, Diamond? I think resting that hospital bed actually did me some good. I'm feeling better. Well, better is relative for me. Ha! <laughs> he still got that lingering cough, but his voice is full of life. Seems like he's fully recovered. Sorry I had to abandon you midway. I ended up forcing everything on you. All the responsibility and emotional trauma. Many people died because of this case. It's a bit sad and lonely knowing no one will even learn the truth beside those of us who were involved. True. Let's remember those who died at the very least. It's a cross that all of us who were involved in the incident will have to bear. Nevertheless, we live on, believing that we saved someone else another day. As what Mark Diamond said during Hanako's case, the suffering of a doctor who constantly has to face the grim reality of death, despite that he's still determined to save others. I comprehend the weight of those words a bit more now. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Having the spirit doctor tell me that made me feel blessed to be a doctor. Say, Yashiki, I hope you keep pushing ahead in your own way, despite all the struggles that come. There's gotta be someone out there who's just waiting for you to extend your hand. I finish my conversation with Daimon, say my goodbyes and leave the infirmary. Then I head straight out of the school. I find myself at the front gate. School's been over for a while, so there are a few students still milling about. Oh, Yashiki! Hi! Hello! What are you doing here, I? Daima told me you'd be here today. Looks like I almost missed you, huh? It's all because Shou keeps slowing me down. Ah, oh, shut up, you bullshit. You're the one at fall here. What's the point of making me dress like this even though the case is over? The case is over, but we're still gonna stick out like a sore thumb if we wear casual clothes to a school. Plus, there's another great chance to wear the Konehara Kami uniform. Look good in that blazer, show. Yikes, stop it. You're giving me the creeps. What a pass if I'd known it'd be like this. Yeah, totally. I worked seven days straight and I finally got a day off. I just want to lay on the couch and drink. <laughs> Both of you complained that way too much. It's just a show like everyone who survived. It's like I invited both of them here. 
It feels like it's been an eternity since we all saw each other last. I asked some of the others too, but apparently they already had plans today. Glad to see you're doing well, old man. Cause you looked like a zombie when we were on that case. Is that so? You got some bags in your eyes though. You been staying up late? No, oh, you mean this? I've been doing some work at home. Sometimes I get too caught up in my work, and by the time I realize it, the sun's creeping through the blinds. You're still living that kind of life even after the case? You're one hell of a night owl. Rest is just as important as work, Yashiki. Should we go and grab something good to eat? I like that idea. Another good ramen shop. They pile on the pork and green onions. Why ramen? Cake is much better, right, Yashiki? No, I. I'm gonna have to pick, aren't I? You don't have to work hard today, right, Yashiki? You're gonna collapse if you don't take a breather once in a while. You're not good at that. Fine. In the end, I let myself be dragged to both a popular ramen place and a cake shop. I and Sho are as bubbly as ever while Hiro chimes in occasionally with sardonic comments. Observing the scene in front of me, it feels like this is the first time I've been able to have a normal, ordinary day in quite a while. However, there's a strange feeling that I can't shake, as I'm walking around in the shoes that don't fit. I guess this is what readapting to mundane life feels like. I guess I'm just too used to having dark, unnatural forces inserting themselves in my life. Final twist... I skimmed through the first headmaster's journal that Mr. Konoe loaned me. The stuff written inside is related to the female doll in The Departed. The first headmaster knew about M-Town's horrific ritual, The Departed's wedding. He apparently learned about it from a former M-Town resident. He wanted to offer condolences to the victims of the ritual and those who were claimed by The Departed's wrath. He particularly pitied Mari Mora's sister as who dreams a happy marriage was betrayed. Inside the clock tower that was built to celebrate Kone Arakami's 10th anniversary, he built a room as a memorial service, complete with an altar where he offered a western doll. That doll was the female doll in the scarlet dress. He got it from someone who dealt in spiritual items. It said the female doll was made to be an offering for a pitiful soul, and had hidden spiritual power. Knowing that, the headmaster believed the doll could soothe the souls of the Mayamura sisters. He then dressed the doll in a beautiful bridal gown. In his mind, he was being thoughtful to the sisters who had their matrimonial wishes twisted into a grotesque ritual. His love for antique things was probably what led him to choose the red dress over a now traditional white gown. The first headmaster may have thought he was helping, but romanticizing the tragedy of the two brides eventually led to this disaster. The deep seated grudge of the Maimura sisters remained in the Konohara era and that grudge began dwelling inside the female doll. Eventually, the departed was born. And that's where the journal ends. The first headmaster passed away after that. Perhaps the departed's curse killed him as well. He set the events in motion and then, 60 years later, the departed appeared at the Konehara Academy. No one can ever truly know how, how or why such things occur. We can only imagine and speculate. After the first headmaster's death, the female doll disappeared. It was taken from the clock tower, at least the part normal people could access. The place the doll ended up must have been the red room somewhere only the departed could access. They were awaiting a new vessel other than the doll, one in which they could make their dream of happy marriage come true. That replacement finally came after so many years. One summer break, two female students visited the clock tower. Those students were the real Michiho Kinokawa and Himeko Doryu. They are there for the clock tower renovation project to commemorate the school's 70th anniversary. The bard brought them to the altar room and... They killed them using the curse of insects and mold, claiming their bodies and memories. 
The older sister Mikiko Mayamura became Himeko Doryu, while the younger sister Michio turned to Michiho Kunikawa. Then they hid in the school, attempting to find a husband that was suitable to fulfill her wish for a happy marriage. The rest is history. The Depart used other spirits and notices as a test for their groom candidates. The Doryu and Michio had come to know were fakes. Everything was an act. Despite that, both of them looked and acted far too human. Their warm words, their gentle smiles and incense. Did they really need to go so far just to test me to see if I was worthy of marriage? Why did they do all that? I mean, they still probably had like a little bit of lingering human side. This is just a hunch. But maybe when the Depart stole Doryu and Michio's memories, they might have noticed there were other ways to satisfy their deep, unrealized wishes. Doryu called that possibility love. The Depart spent their days in the school trying to stay near their husband, having conversations and swimming smiles like any other youth. Born in a feudal town a hundred years ago, maybe they'd never had the opportunity to experience that before. As a result, their love for their husband grew. And then they wanted to eat me. This would have been something that they truly treasured. That might have been how they could act so naturally, protecting that glittering youth. Who knows? Maybe they even wished they could just continue living in that way. Except they were spirits. They couldn't escape their sanguine, lolent fate. In order to fulfill their desire for marriage, they ended up choosing the spirit's path. Perhaps it was the only way they knew how to get what they craved. Dear husband, for so long, for so, so long, for you. I wonder what the Departed was trying to say at that time. Did it have something to do with love? Even their intense resentment disappeared just by imitating Amitot's traditional wedding. Was that also because of their love? If that's true, my strange life as a teacher and the time I spent with them was not so in vain. Because that way, the memories we made together are what ended up saving those girls. The Departed. A terrifying spirit that killed a lot of people in the last two months. Though considering their grudges and wishes, they were also poor victims themselves. The terror and sadness that filled them. After learning both sides of the coin. I... Want to forgive the departed? I want to forgive the departed. I reached my cup after that. Chugging down the liquid inside, I get up from my seat and check the time. The day has already changed. Late at night. Guess it's time. Time to start working. Mary? I head to my room on the second floor. And then... Yep. All right, all done. Oh, we fixed the Crimson Doll. I finally managed to fix it. I was able to use the techniques I learned at the workshop I found when looking up information about doll care. Though it's fixed, her soul won't come back. Yashiki? This female doll saved my life. The Pard's crutch has moved from this doll to Doryu and Michiho. So who was the spirit inhabiting this doll? I have a hunch. It may have been the souls of the real Michiho and Doryu. Those two girls were brimming with spiritual energy, which is likely why the Departed chose to claim their bodies. I have a hunch that their souls dwelled inside the doll after they were killed. The way the doll's appearance changed as the Departed transformed might be evidence that the girl's soul was still connected to their bodies. You might have told you this, I literally called that. It's the human side still there. So the doll was wandering around the school without their memories, not knowing what to do. Despite being in that confused state, their fear and resentment of the Departed still remained. That's why they helped me. Still, what's the point of me fixing this doll? It's not like it'll speak again if it's mended. Plus, even if it were to talk, what useful information would it possibly have for me? As far as I know, the souls contained inside this doll belong to the actual Michiho and Doryu. Not the fake versions who considered me their teacher. 
It's a pointless undertaking. I have a feeling it's only making me feel emptier inside. I guess it's a form of prayer. I won't change anything, though. I also believe that it isn't for nothing. I believe some souls will be saved if I do this. Hang on a little longer, you two. No. It's just never doll in our collection. Oops. Spirit Hunter. End. Well, we got some endings to get. Mysterious ball joined a doll clad in a bright red dress. She knew she was damaged beyond repair, but once the party began devouring spirits, the cracks in her face were mended. After she gained the ability to speak, she provided key advice to the protagonist. The warning spirits of Dory and Michiho were killed by the departed. The first time Master placed the doll on the altar to confront the guild was victimized by the departed's wedding. The departed dwelled in the doll until it killed the two students that claimed their bodies. So we're gonna go for the bad ending now. my answer. My deduction is correct and this doll is supposed to be the departed. I said the departed is quite clever, so there might be some ulterior motives behind this move. She's departed and the departed is very cunning. This could be some kind of ruse. There's no need for me to have to heed her words. I climb the ladder once again. The female doll. My voice echoes throughout the room. There's no answer at all, only the heavy silence filling the air. <coughs> this is... I'm this feeling of mold. It's getting hard to breathe. Good lord. You did not get it. No. I was wrong? I believed in you. What a shame, dear husband. I hear a voice from behind me. And when I turned around... husband. Still, I love you. Let us exchange a brief vow. Can I bite you? Thank you, dear husband. Goodbye.
いてのニュースです本日未明東京都 H 市にある近衛原学園高等学校で男性が倒れているとの通報がありました男性は死亡が確認されており警察が詳しい状況を調べているとのことです Spirit Hunter and b a d e n specifically. I just want to note that this is going to be the、uh, true ending route. We did the good ending before, now we have to do something new, which can only be done after we beat the game once. The Dorian Kinokawa thing. So, Sakamoto chided Joryu Michiho because she believes in her intuition. Try to convince her. Hold on. There's a reason why both of them are defending me. Among all the teachers, I'm the only one who's taken their concerns seriously and pursuing the departed. This departed nonsense again, really. You really think you have a carte blanche to do anything just because you're investigating the departed? Takai Uzumi Horikoshi and Kakada. Four c o n e h a r students who have mysteriously disappeared in a short period of time. I'm sure you realize how natural that looks, don't you? That. I'm not asking you to believe in spirits. But you need to understand that I'm the only adult here that's trying to do something about these students' disappearances. Mr. Yashiki. And they're just trying to help me. They want to bring peace and normality back to the school. And they're trying to help in whatever way they can. That's all that's going on. Sakamoto leaves the faculty room without saying anything. I forgot, I got a call from Miss Sakamoto earlier. Did you get scolded again? No, the opposite. She apologized because she felt like she went too far about the stuff with you. Oh. It's because of what I said to her. How very kind of her to take immediate action after she changed her mind. Isn't that great, Mr. Yashiki? She won't be picking on you anymore. Oh, that's true. How's your investigation going, by the way? Did you learn anything new? I made a promise to Doryu, but I don't want to lie to Konoe either. Which means I can only remain silent. Alright. Is Ms. Soko Makamoto not here today? She actually came today, but she had to leave early because she was feeling under the weather. Her face was really pale, and even standing upright seemed to cause her an immense amount of pain. It's look. It's looking like she must have been possessed by a spirit as well. But Mr. Kona and the students don't look as so good. They don't seem to be suffering as much as Sakamoto. Maybe the spirits are affecting everyone differently. Goodness, maybe some malicious disease is spreading on campus. Our school really is cursed. Well, yes. I leave the faculty room after saying goodbye to Mr. Konoe. He looks rather worried. We're doing good so far, but the real task has just begun. Yeah, we better proceed with caution. So, this time since Sakamoto. We did the little change of Sakamoto. She survived this time. She's not here. What? Because two s i s t e r wanted to make that happen for school, so we have to turn no longer with us. The clock tower is frozen in time, but the hands won't move ever again. Because it's two students who wanted to make that happen for the school's 70th anniversary are no longer with us. What? What is this? I hear the sound of a bell. But why? The departed should be gone. What should I do? Return to the clock tower. Don't tell me. Are they calling me? When I turn to the clock tower, the bell stops ringing.
Because this is all new. There's nothing strange on the first floor. Maybe it's coming from upstairs. Huh? Wait, the girls alive? Maybe the original girls. I hear the sound of someone on the ladder coming from above. Someone's climbing down. From the third floor to the second. Oh, God. Give me a break. This should be over already. The sound then moves to the first floor. And what comes down from above is... No way. You gotta be kidding me. Yumiko Doryu. Michiho Kinukawa. It can't be. The departed soul should have been saved. Bova, you shouldn't be here. Here, they're giving the bodies back. Um... Who are you? Are you guys stuck with the scar in the hair? After that... I bring the two confused girls back to the infirmary. And then... The area of Sokomashido survived being attacked by the departed. I asked the girls what happened. It's an informative conversation. They're the real Doryu Michiho, not the departed. Never them know how they ended up in the clock tower. Their memories stop in August when their bodies were stolen by the departed. In short, the both of them were complete strangers. That's the first time we've ever met. After a while, Mr. Konai finally arrives. He seems pretty confused after hearing about the situation. But when he discovers the two students are alive, a gentle relieved smile widens across his face. He clutches my hands and profusely thanks me over and over again. I ask Mr. Konai to take care of Doryu and Michio, and then I leave the infirmary. Both of them seem like they're genuinely the real girls. However, why do they still have that mark in the white hair? I mentioned the Yasuoka and Mashita as we're heading out. Oh, really? I didn't see it, though. I doubt they can see it. Yasuka thinks for a moment. Maybe it's like a lingering thing? Unless it's all ruse. Both of them have been controlled by the departed for a long time. I wouldn't be surprised if traces of the departed still remain on their bodies. I don't like the sound of that at all. Is there anything I can do? Hmm, let's see. I guess you should probably not talk to them. Huh? Oh, I will reawaken the departed's feelings. If the departed really was saved, the mark and white hair will eventually disappear. But if they meet you, the departed's remnants might stir again. Nothing good will come of that. Your best course of action would be not to meet them. Do you understand? Yes. Thank you, Yashiki. This case is over. There's no need for you to talk with them again. Besides, it's not like they know you either. That's true. I wonder what happened to that cause this surprising outcome. I have no way of knowing. This is a matter that surpasses human comprehension. I don't really mind not knowing, though. The most important thing is that they're alive and well, even if they lost their memories. Let's just celebrate that miracle. Saving Sakamoto is enough. Saving her. Setting a catalyst for like the, the part to be vaguely nicer and spare the girls. 
Oh, this was something in Sakamoto, I don't know. A week has passed since that night. Hello? It's me, Shuji Daimon. How are you feeling, Yashiki? That should be my line. Are you still in K Hospital? No. I was discharged two days ago. I've mostly recovered. So we didn't have the meeting with him in the school this time. Mr. Konoe has told me some stuff. I thought you might be curious to hear what he had to say, so I just wanted to phone you up and share it with you. Diamond proceeds to tell me what happened at the Konehara Kemi after the case. Even though the part was now gone, that didn't change the fact that four students went missing in a short period of time. Mr. Kone will resign from his position to take responsibility for the disappearances. It's a shame this is re wasn't really his fault, but he doesn't seem to have any regrets. Diamond was also given the first headmaster's journal that was relative Mr. Kone found at their home. He said there were some interesting things written in it, so he'd bring it by sometime. And about Doryu and Kinokawa. In the end, the police didn't pursue the case, for the wishes of their parents in the school. They've been resting and recuperating in the dorm. They're doing well. They also have been speaking to a counselor, but we haven't seen any particularly unusual behavior. That's a relief. What about the two months of memory they lost? They've been diagnosed with memory impairment. They don't remember either of us. That's for the best. If they remember us, they'll only rebuild connections to the departed. Everything's good as long as they're alive. I understand that feeling now. If only you were a doctor. Diamond. Two souls should have been claimed for saved. As a spirit doctor, you should be proud of your work. Thanks. I'll come visit you soon. I still need to hand off the journal. Let's have some drinks. I've got Hiro and Mashida as well. Catch you later, Yashiki. Phew. Knowing those two are safe and sound is more than enough for me. I simply hope they're able to enjoy the normal mundane life they lived before the departed shared their worlds. Who is it? Who's showing up at my place at this time of night? My computer training of Eita is tomorrow. If I remember correctly, is a diamond already? I'm... Not sure if I like this. Ah, oh, yeah. I remember this area. When I open the front door... Uh-oh. Michiho and Doryu are standing in front of me. How is this possible? Sorry for visiting you this late. You're Yashiki, right? Thank you for saving us the other day. Oh, yeah. What brings you here? There's something we want to ask you. It's about our lost memories. Memories. We heard some things from our friends in the dorm. They said Michiho and I were helping you out a lot recently. Is that true? Oh, we have no idea since we lost our memory. Ah, let's try it. Be honest. Yes. Would you mind telling us what happened during that time? That's... To tell you the truth, lately there's been this strange feeling lingering in the back of our minds. We want to figure out what it was, since we think it might have something to do with our memory loss. A strange feeling. Yeah, so like... I've always been into frogs, but out of nowhere I've come to love bugs. And that's weird. Michiro touches her butterfly earrings when she says that. This is definitely something caused by remnants of the departed. So our fears are true, it seems. Well, what are you going to do if you regain your memory? What if you learn those missing memories aren't as blissful as you think? Still, we still want them back. I knew it. I can't betray my emotions. But internally, I'm smiling wryly. Five months ago, I also went in search of memories that I had lost. I understand their need to know more than they realize. But... I can't support their efforts. This is what's best for them and everyone else. 
Sorry. There's nothing I can share with you. Besides, doesn't your dorm have a curfew? You better go home. We break the curfew all the time. That doesn't bother us. And I also broke the curfew when we were inspecting the M-Town shop. Huh? What? What am I saying? Inspecting the M-Town shop? That's... Our memories from when the Departed Command come into their bodies. Slowly resurfacing as they speak with me. This is the worst case scenario. I can't afford to waste any more time with politeness. I don't feel like talking anymore. Go home, Kunikawa. Dorian. you. Wait a minute. I feel like I remember something. No. Get out of here now. But, but... Just let it go, Michiho. No. No. Huh? Well... Shit. Tensions got high in that moment I let something slip. Did you just call me Michiho? Mary? Mary, can you come downstairs? Are you alive? <laughs> Kinukawa. That's not how you speak to me. Call me Michiho. Didn't you promise me that, Mr. Yashiki? So tell me. Yes, I remember everything now. I... I turned it to the part, didn't I? What in the world are you talking about, Michio? Not just me, but Hime as well. Come on, you remember too, Hime. The love we had when we were the departed. L -l love? I want one! Uh. Doria. No, no way. Was I... I departed. I... I remember... Everything. Even when we went to the clock tower together. No way. I can't believe how easily they regained their memories as the departed. Defeated and crestfallen. I accept that there's nothing more that can be done. It's too late for regrets. That being said, the best way forward now is to support them and try and steer them toward the right path. Alright, so let me give you a book. So you've been cursed and you're forever marked by ghosts now. The girls quietly drink the coffee I brewed for them. It's your second time making us coffee, huh? Brewed coffee really is much better than the instant ones. It's really delicious, Mr. Yashiki. You don't have to call me that. I'm not your teacher anymore. It's a habit I can't seem to shake, even if I was only doing it while I was controlled by the departed. That's gotta, like, mess your mind up. Same. They seem to be a lot more relaxed now. They certainly have an amazing ability to adapt to what life has thrown them. Seeing how Michio has just accepted to suddenly a bug lover. I guess they must have prepared themselves to roll with whatever they learn after regaining their memories. Now, Doryu, Michio, there's a few things I'd like to ask you. Do you mind? Sure, go ahead. You're probably curious about a few things that we can't answer, right? Just ask away. Don't hesitate. We also want you to know about the Departed's memories. We won't have peace of mind unless we do that. Ask about their health. How are you two feeling? Same as usual. If anything, I feel much more refreshed now. It feels like the fog in my head has cleared up. I'm worried about this white hair, though. It stands out way too much. You can see it? Yep, same with the mark on Hime's face. I guess it's supposed to be the Departed's mark or something. Yeah. Just from piecing things together. The Mayamura sisters had bruises resembling mold all over their bodies, and their hair lost in its color as they became more corpse-like. The mark in hair must have originated from the pitiful demise of the two sisters. Damn, this sucks. Oh, my hair will go back to normal. Stop complaining, Michio. It's already a miracle that we're even still alive. 
Yeah, you're right. Hehe. <laughs> I feel like this is like a proxy of, uh... There was an aspect where the sisters desired to live a normal life. You know, not be these man-eating ghost bug things. So I feel like they... I don't think they'll pull an evil twist. They might, after all this is over. But, um... They might have decided, like, we're gonna exist kind of like a little bit of a parasite in these girls. Like, the girls will have their lives back. That's why they gave the bodies back. But they'll live as a parasite, like I said, live like a normal life through them a little bit. Ask about the Departed's memories. How much of the Departed's memories can you recall? Hmm, not everything. I guess we pretty much remember the most unforgettable moments. So do you still have their painful memories? Yes. But we don't feel any negative emotions from them because you saved their souls. The painful stuff they experienced in the past just feels like a story or movie now. Ava sigh relief. If the loathing the brides felt during the wedding ceremony somehow remained in both of them, their psyches would could have been crushed under that weight. Except for the painful memories, I still pretty much remember how I felt about some stuff. Like how I love bugs and the departs love for you. That's gonna be awkward. Michio! There's no point in hiding anymore, Hime. It's not like we can do anything about it. Because this feeling belongs to the departed. You have a point. I hear Mashita like kicking down my door right now. That's how the memories returned. You know, this is all thanks to the departed. I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean. You saved the departed souls. During their final moments, they gave us our bodies back. Oh, okay. But why though? That's something I learned from the departed's memories. It's a pretty strong feeling. They were grateful to you, and they want you to know it. Like, they really, really want you to know it. The Departed felt grateful to me. You might find this suspicious, but do you know why we're able to get our lives back? It's because the Departed was completely spinning by you. At least that's why I believe. Love created a true miracle. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about all this. I guess it means that all the struggles I had to go through to act as her husband were worth it in the end. I told you you got literally married. By the time I finish asking all my questions, it's gone pretty late. Thank you so much for listening to us, Mr. Yashiki. And for the coffee as well. I truly enjoy the rich smell now, as well as the complex beer notes layered behind the creaminess and sweetness. Such a refined, acquired taste. I'll get you back to your dorm. It's already late. I'll try to talk to your dorm manager about the curfew breaking as well. No need to mind that. Of course we have to, duh. Thank you very much, Mr. Yashiki, and I'm sorry for everything. I have no idea how these memories are going to affect you. So if you start to feel something strange or weird, you make sure to contact me, got it? Understood. I might come here even if I have no business, though. I want to drink your delicious coffee. Oh. Oh, jeez. Both Michiho and Doryu were saved. It remains unknown why the Departed saved them both, though. Although they said the Departed was grateful to the me, I doubt that. I told you it's a parasite on them. This is just a hunch, but... The Departed might have entrusted both their memories and love to those two girls. The dead do not only leave behind resentment, there are also times when their hopes and dreams linger on, as well. It's kind of like they're still alive in a way, symbolically. Like a very weird reincarnation, indirectly. If it was something that Depart decided on a whim, it doesn't change the fact that those two girls are alive and breathing. Somehow my actions were able to save lives that were impossible to save. A spirit doctor, who saves both the living and the dead. If I can be the light 
for those who are trapped in darkness. And I will be the spirit doctor, trademark, and I will reach out my hand to them. Spirit Hunter, end. So this one you didn't reassemble the doll in this one. Because you didn't feel as guilty, like you didn't feel like you had to bring their souls back. Mysterious entity rumored to be hunting in the school. I was called here to look into them and death notice as they sent. Rumors of vengeful spirits and disappearances were terrifying the students. My notes about their identity, background, etc. are in the next section. The departed in the school and killed many people to satisfy their unfulfilled desires. Formed by the vengeful spirits of innocent girls who were killed during a ritual sacrifice called the Departed's Wedding. Those girls were Mikiko, Michi Michio, and Mayamura, sisters who wished for a happy marriage. The sisters soul dwelled inside a doll placed in the clock tower. Two Doryu and Kinukawa entered. They cursed and killed the two, possessed their bodies, and hid in plain sight. They sent death notices and manipulated the spirits to test their groom candidates. Once I arrived, I became the main candidate. As I passed the test, they grew even more obsessed with their dear husband, and began devouring spirits to become beautiful. They simply wanted to be loved by the one who caught their eye, and with the winning held the clock tower, their wish was finally fulfilled. The Departed killed many people and were willing to be killed far more as part of their insane plan. However, their feelings were pure, and they were gravely wronged in their lives. Most importantly, as a final act of thanks, they released Michiho and Doryu, for that I'm grateful to them. If there is a god, I offer a prayer that both their souls rest in peace. Even if this whole incident was merely fate, I'd still like to end this note with a parting wish for those who have passed. May your stained souls rest in peace. Age two months. Whoa. Occupation hiding in school. Hobby searching for dear husband. This story takes place after the end of the main story where all the mark bearers are alive. However, your level, toll souls, and number of sacred objects you have may differ from the main story. Can't save your progress. It's probably gonna be a short chapter. Um, that wasn't even like a title, that was just like a scream. Did you know? The Tokyo Loop Line is apparently haunted. The haunting spirit's name is Princess Mach. Or is it Mach? I think it's Mach, like it looks, it's spelled like Mach. What? That's not a hoax, I'm telling you. One of my acquaintances saw it. When on a weekend, they were driving on the Metro Expressway. A familiar road, a familiar scene. They were just on a normal drive. But then they noticed something strange. There were no cars around. This is not weird. They're on the Metro Expressway at nighttime on a weekend at that. They then heard a strange sound over the sound of their engine. It sounded like the clop of a horse's gallop. Crazy, right? They timidly peered into the rearview mirror. Do you know what happened next? Oh my god. It's like the Headless Horseman. They saw a huge horse running their way. A feral horse that could even devour humans. A high-pitched piercing voice echoed down the expressway. Was it the voice of one riding the horse? It was too dark to tell. All they could see was the train of a dress, illuminated by the street lights. The horse footsteps were getting closer and closer, and now they could hear its rough breathing. The horse was going to overtake them at any moment. My friend used to join street races back then, and they had confidence in their driving skills, and yet they couldn't pull away from the horse. They didn't know what to do. Should they continue driving or should they hit the brakes and give up? They felt like they'd die if they made the wrong choice. This is the right choice. My friend held their breath. And then... They step on the brake. The beast raced past them. and continued galloping into the darkness.
They've never taken the Metro Expressway since that day. Once you experience something like that, that feeling doesn't go away easily. Huh? I wonder what would have happened to them if they hadn't stopped them. Hmm. No one would know. Because if they chose to continue... Rumor has it they have died in a terrible accident. And that's how the Princess Mock rumor goes. It was featured in the OO parts a while ago. What do you think? Pretty exciting, right? The young girl flashes a satisfied smile after finishing her story. She was never joking nor bluffing. She seems to be enjoying herself. Rumors of the Princess Mock have been running wild in H City lately. I actually want to look into it tonight. But I want the spirit doctor to help me too. Oh, don't worry. I'll make sure to pay you. I wasn't asking you to do free labor. No, I don't need your money. Just answer my questions. Sure, ask away. Who are you? A few days following the Konohara Kami incident, one night a young girl showed up at Kujo Mansion out of the blue. Without even so much as introduction, she started talking about Princess Mock rumors. You seem to have a lot of young girls, like, appearing out of the blue in your household. Here we are now. Oh, did I not tell you? My name is Kaoru Hazuki. I came all the way to H City after hearing about you from Kashiwagi. So she's in the Queens of Eyes. I guess I'd ask her some questions first. So this character is from Spirit Hunter NG. This was the idol girl. Now NG takes place... I think it took place like a few years after the events of Deathmark. But this takes place only a few months after Deathmark. So she has to be considerably younger in this state. So the Queenness of Eyes, I guess I should ask her some questions first. Let's figure out what's up with Keiru. Azuki, ask about her. Hmm? You want to know me? I live in Kamakura Ward, a third year at Shoma Junior High. My birthday is on Halloween, October 31st. My favorite books are OO parts and horror novels. My hobby is going to haunted places at night. I love nighttime. There are thrilling things that you can only see at night. Like spirits, UFOs, or the beautiful moon. Did you want she's told me in her hoodie? It's obvious that she's into cult things. You see, I once wondered, what would I do if I was abducted by a UFO and I was taking a night stroll? You died of turtles in a bad ending. Would they perform body modification surgery on me? <laughs> she has quite the imagination. Ask about her and I. You seem to know I. What is your relationship with her? We're represented by the same agency. I'm an idle trainee. I haven't made my debut yet, though. Yeah. Five years. I is so beautiful, don't you think? Not only beautiful, but she's also good at singing and dancing. Her performances are top-notch. No wonder men are obsessed with her. She's also got great fashion sense. Judging by the way she gushes about I, she must look up to her. That's what brings her here. I heard about you from I, and I read your featured article in OO Parts. I came here because I'm interested in you. I'm the type of girl who can't hold myself back once I've decided to do something, you know? What does it have to be this late at night, though? I'm busy. I have school during the day and practices during the evening. And the spirit doctor is a night hunter, so I figured it's best to meet you at night. At night? What? I know your true identity. You're actually a skilled exorcist who hunts spirits lurking in the darkness of the night, aren't you? Come again? And wow, to think you live in this big mansion all by yourself. I'm Batman. Are you the descendant of the vampires from Transylvania, maybe? It'd be awesome if you truly were. Give me your autograph, please. Hee <laughs> hee. Is she for real? If she is, then she's on another level. In any case, Spirit Doctor, I plan to investigate Princess Mock tonight. Sorry, I know this is super sudden, but can you help me? Sure, why not? 
Thank you. Just like that. I decided to help Hasuki investigate this Prince's monk who has supposedly been haunting H City. <laughs> Say, Hasuki. Do you have any leads? Of course I do. According to Adam Love. Adam what? A frequent commentator in the cult forums. They wrote about Princess Mock. Oh. Sam Love is a person's name. That's a weird name. I mean, all form usernames are like that. By the way, Adam Love said Princess Mock tends to show up at haunted spots. Like where? Don't know. That's why I'm planning on hitting up all the haunted spots in each city. If you hadn't come, I'd have to walk to the front all on foot. Haha. <laughs> I think this girl would be touring HC in the dead of night, going on nothing but this unreliable piece of information. This girl's absurd. Do you know any odd spots around here, Spirit Doctor? Please take me to them. A few places come to mind. They're places I investigated during previous cases. Fine. We'll end the investigation if we don't find anything. That means you give up and go home. Are we clear? Okay, let's go! Talk to Hasuki. I don't know much about this kid, should I ask some questions? You're trying to be an idol, right? Do you want to be an idol like I, or...? Hmm... I do respect her, but that's not my goal. I want to make the most of what I have. What do you mean by that? I want to be a mysterious yet charming idol, like spiritual phenomena and UFOs. I want to be an occult idol. Occult idol, huh? So you're gonna pretend to be a ghost in white clothing or what? Yeah, and that's the problem. There's a lot of ghost stories out there. Ghost aliens, UMA, Sushi Noko. I don't know what the theme I should go for. She ends up going for the merry look. That's why tonight. Hmm? What are you gonna do tonight? It's nothing. Come on, let's hurry to the haunted spots. Oh, okay. Mr. OOK over here. A ruined school building stands in the darkness. That building used to be H Elementary School. Don't tell me this is... the place where you and I fought spirits. Well, yes. Weren't some crazy animal experiments performed here? Meat and organs were splattered all over, dark red blood stained everything. Did that room really exist? Yeah. That was something I never want to experience again. Spirit Doctor. Talking about meat and organs made me hungry. I'm craving yakiniku right now. Can we go eat something after this? Let's look for places that serve thigh meat. You're one strong girl. Huh? Mr. Yashiki? Moe? Good evening. Why are you here, Moe? I'm here for work. And what are you doing here? With a girl at that. Seriously, it's not what it looked like. It's just a coincidence I keep going out at night with very young girls. Alone. To abandoned places. This is also work related. Boy, I might know something about Princess Mock. She knows a lot about spiritual stuff after all. You can supposed to ask her while I'm at it. Besides the point, Moy, you know I'm only into dolls. Dolls that murder people. Introduce Hazuki. I introduced Hazuki to Moy. Heh, <laughs> so you like occult stuff too, huh? I can synthesize with you. And you're an inspiring idol at that. You're gonna get a big no time. Whoa, what an honor to hear that. I never expected to have Moy P say that to me. Hmm? Do you know Moy? 
Why would I not? She's a popular high school journalist who made a brilliant debut through OO Parts. Or is it OOP Arts? Hmm. It's not that big of a deal. I only got my own corner in that magazine because the editorial department pitied me. No way, you're amazing. I mean, your article from last month. What about it? The occult maniacs became fast friends and are talking merrily. I'm glad they're having fun. I think they're talking about zombies and black magic. Boy. I'm here to take photos. The editor-in-chief asked me to take photos of an abandoned school at night. But if you think about it, what kind of person would ask a high schooler to do something like that? You'd probably get caught in some kind of regulations. But it's fun, right? Well, yeah, going to haunted school at night is exciting. Ask about Princess Mock. I'll let Moy know about our situation and ask her about Princess Mock. I know of her, obviously. She's been featured in OO Parts before. I'm pretty sure no, it's OOP Arts. OOP Arts, yeah. I never knew she haunted H City, though. Apparently, information is posted on an occult forum. Don't you visit that kind of form a lot? No, it could be OOP parts too, though. Hmm. Hmm, I haven't been able to lately, though. I'm pretty busy, sorry. My editor in chief of the readers usually bring things up to me if the rumors are good. And I haven't heard anything from them. It might be a hoax. You know, there are people online who like to make up stories just to get attention. Hazuki. It could be the case. I'll keep that in mind. I guess that's all the information I'm going to get from Moy. I wrote down all the things we talked about after parting ways with her. Sure, Moy. Moy has a quote in the monthly magazine, o OOP Arts, or the name Moy P. Moy and Hazuki both love occult stuff, so they get along well. Name OOP Arts, editor in chief, know the readers are corroborating rumors about Princess Mox's appearance in H City. It might be a hoax. They would leave H Elementary School. Dr. Hazuki. Say, Hazuki. You're not going to call your parents. Oh, it's fine. Daddy's on a business trip in America. America. And Mommy's in Hokkaido for shooting. Hokkaido. I see. You must be lonely. Not really. I'm used to it. I'm pretty happy because I can go out at night freely. Goodness. I don't think I can convince her otherwise. Be careful when you're out at night. Terrible things can happen. There are some mistakes that can't be fixed by anyone. I know that. That's why I always carry a buzzer and a stun gun with me. The other day I gave a guy who was following me a rude awakening. Glad you're safe. Upset here might be dangerous. Thanks for your concern, Spirit Doctor. Shall we go to the next haunted spot? I think this is one of the uh, phone booth girl, right? The role we're taking at the moment is called Manhole Street. As we can all see, there are an unusual number of man maintenance holes in the street, hence the name. No need to tell me, Spirit Doctor. There's an underground vault down here, right? Oh yeah, no, this is where the big uh, war god thing was. You sure know a lot, huh? I mentioned it when she talked about the Mark incident. And there was a secret experiment that was conducted there, right? What? It's no use hiding it. I know everything. Dr. Diamond and Lady Hero, a dastardly duo of evil scientists plotting world domination. It's true. They're planning to launch spiritual weapons left behind by the Imperial Army, aren't they? Hehe. <laughs> I'm excited. This bizarre statement is probably based on the stories I told her. Hazuki's power of imagination must have warped it into this tale. As if on cue, one of the manhole lids opens up. That's gonna be, uh... I know who it is. He didn't appear in the main game. Oopsie-daisy. 
Oh, no, it's you. I thought it was going to be our, uh, the, the ever guy. I forgot his name, but he was, this was his chapter. It's just Hero, because Hero's weird. Emerging from the hole is none other than Hero. I guess they didn't want to draw new sprites for the people who didn't show up. Huh. Yashiki. Who's that kid beside you? Never seen her. Oh, so after your escapades with high schoolers, now you're on an idea of a middle schooler. It's not like that. I'm only into killer dolls. Jeez, you better cut this out. I refuse to help you if you get arrested for this, you know. Hey. White coat, glasses, a lady? Are you perhaps the evil scientist lady hero? I'm a fan. Give me your autograph, please. What the hell is wrong with your date? It's not a date. She's I's friend. Her I mean, her imagination is much stronger than others. Just let her be. She doesn't mean any harm. I don't get. Youngsters are scary. Anyway, what brings you here, Yashiki? As a general rule, Hiro doesn't really care about spiritual stuff. I doubt she knows about Princess Mach. It doesn't hurt to ask, though. So. Introduce Hazuki. Introduce Hazuki to Hiro. I see, so she's like Moi. This kid's got more screws loose than her, though. By the way... She stares hard at Hazuki's chest. Do you have any complaints? What is going on? Well, I'm not as big as I. I'm not talking about that. Do you like UFOs? Oh, she's looking at the printing on her clothes. Yep. I love mysterious things like ghosts, UMA, and Tsushinoko. Tsushinoko. Hmm, you're still young, but you don't get it. The most crucial thing in life is the inquisitive spirit and curiosity. Without that, the human race is finished. Don't hesitate to take action as soon as you feel a spark of curiosity. Got it? That's how you died in that one bad ending. Yes! Hi. Haha, <laughs> what a sincere answer. Don't encourage this girl like that, hero. I don't think it's right to dampen a child's curiosity. Is an adult's responsibility to support whatever absurd things a kid does? Nah. So why are you here? Inspecting this vault, of course. Oh, they, they messed up on the names. I do this once a week. I've got Banshee helping me do That's the ever guy. Banshee. I bait him. He told Banshee's a man who lives in this underground vault. He was also a mark bearer who helped me out in my previous case. How's Banshee doing? He's doing fine. Too fine, if I must say so. He's been rummaging through food to prepare for his winter sleep. His skin is glowing. There's Banshee. See? He's doing great, right? What was that? It's a private underground man, isn't it? Wow, a resident of darkness craving blood and meat. I can't believe an underground man really exists in ancient city's vault. I've got to see with my own eyes. Gotta go! Hey, wait. Stop her, hero. Hey! Together with hero, we both catch Hazuki before she goes deeper into the vault. After much persuasion, she's finally able to calm down. Ah, but the underground man... Was this because I told her being curious is abhorrent? No, this is pretty much her normal behavior. Oh, what a frightening kid. It's about Princess Mock. I tell Hiro about her situation and ask her about Princess Mock. The heck is that? Never heard of it before. Well, I'm not surprised. Mach 1 is the speed of sound. The standard speed of sound traveling through air is around 1200 kilometers, five times faster than the bullet train. Are you saying this princess can travel at that speed? There's no way. But she's probably as fast as a car. So calling a princess Mach is an inaccurate exaggeration, then. This really irks me. Do something about it, Yashiki. It's out of my hands. There's nothing I can do. I guess that's all the information I'll be able to get from Hiro. I write down all the things we talked about after parting ways with her. 
As he loves paranormal stuff in general, and the UFO printer hoodie is evidence of that. Hiro inspects the underground vault along with Ichiro Banshee on a weekly basis. Hiro doesn't know about Princess Mock, though. She's hurt by the inaccuracy of the name. Then we leave Manhole Street. Dr. Hatsuki Fervor. I'm so jealous of you. You've been able to meet so many spirits. Yeah, jealous. Hatsuki starts talking before I get him up on my mouth. You died at Turtles. I want to see a spirit too. Maybe I'll know what kind of theme I want to have. Spirits aren't just some kind of hobby. They can kill. But still truth lies behind the gate. I know you might be confused by what I said. But I'm serious. A hundred thousand percent serious. How's it key? I feel like I've gotten a little bit better understanding of her. It seems like her pursuit of the idol career she wants is what drives her to do all these crazy things. Risking her life for her own goals, she reminds me of the Mark Bears who challenge all those bizarre incidents. Time to go to the next place. Let's believe we will meet a spirit next time. I hope we don't. While waiting for the traffic lights to change, I jot down all the things Hazuki told me. An idol trainee who's trying to debut as an occult idol. Because her parents are rarely at home, she's free to try ups around at night. Hazuki is trying very hard to find a good theme for her occult idol concept. Konehara Kami. It's been a while since I've come to the school late at night. Fortunately, it looks like the same as usual. So this is Konehara Kami, huh? I told me about. Doesn't a spirit called the Departed haunt this place? And that's all in the past. Things have calmed down now. But it still kind of lives on in these two girls, and its memory has like supplanted their memory, and they like have a crush on me and stuff because like the Departed had a crush on me, so like they have a crush on me now, and they also like bugs or something. It's really convoluted. It's really awkward. I think there's some moral quandary things here and like existential crisis and stuff, but you know what? Yeah, that's all in the past. Things have calmed down now. I see. So you truly are a spirit hunter, Deathmark. Too. Please don't give me another <laughs> strange nickname. Spirit Doctor has plenty for me. Oh my goodness. Judy? Look who's here, Mr. Yashiki. And I see you've brought more poor people with you. Tempted by the inviting night breeze, I decided to go for a walk. To think I'd meet you here, this must be fate. You haven't changed at all, Ave. As tiring as it is to talk to him, I can't deny that he's a knowledgeable fellow. He might know something about Princess Mach. I'm gonna ask him. Introduce Hazuki. I introduce Hazuki to Abe. An idol trainee? Who cares about that? I'm not interested in worshipping idols. I am the only idol you need. I'm interested in you, though. Did you do the writing on that talisman yourself? Obviously. Each stroke is filled with my heart and soul. Whoa, amazing. You got pretty handwriting, too. Why don't you write down heart stroke once a month? My handwriting is so ugly, it's basically unreadable. That means your devotion is lacking. You need to believe the spirit living in the tip of your brush will drive away the bad spirit of writing the sutra. Only then will your handwriting naturally improve. Oh, I see. From what I can tell, you should be able to see things. I have high hopes for you, young lady with the galactic disc in her chest. Yep, you better trust me. Is it just me, or... People who have imaginations that run wild tend to be compatible with each other. I'm 100% sure you're wearing contacts. Ask about Abe. Like I said before, I'm out on a walk. There's no better place to meditate than the calm darkness that suffuses at night. Going on a night stroll sounds nice. Did you happen to see ghosts or something? No, this neighborhood is pretty quiet. 
because Mr. Yashiki just exercised the worst one. You really are amazing, Spirit Doctor. Death Mark II. True, the Spirit Doctor is the greatest of all. Both Hasuki and Abe are staring at me with awestruck gazes. This is really uncomfortable. I want to turn and run away. Let's go, Princess Mach. I told Abe about our situation and asked him about Princess Mach. Yes, I've seen the post. If I remember correctly, Adam Love claims that Princess Mach is haunting H City. Is that post trustworthy? If I'm being completely honest, it's difficult to tell. Because the person didn't provide any evidence to back up their claim. However, the person who made the post is none other than Adam Love. Here to elaborate. Adam Love is a frequent commenter in the forums. They know a lot about the Mark incident. They even know some strange things that aren't included in, oh, arts. It's possible this Adam Love is someone who's involved with the case. Someone who's involved with the case. Are the Mark Bears the only ones who go down like forums of Moe and Eita? There might be someone who heard such stories from people involved, like myself. I guess that's all the information I'm going to get from Abe. Alright, on all the things we talked about after parting ways with him. Hazuki and Abe seem to get along well because they're oddly similar to each other. Aware of Adam Love's post about Princess Mock's appearance in H-City, but saw no evidential basis to the claim. Adam Love might be connected to the Mark, which could mean they're actually Moe or Eita. Abe and Hatsuki also know the Mark story. Then we leave Konohara Academy. After some time, this is it. We've checked out all the haunted spots nearby that I know of. The only remaining place is the Tioyama rest area. That's far away from H City's downtown. Let me ask you one thing. Are you satisfied yet? Nope. You haven't found Princess Mach. Likely story. But Hasuki, Moy had doubts about the rumor. Abi also said he had no evidence. What's a post from Adam Love? They know a lot about the markets in it. I don't think it's a hoax. It's absolutely worth looking into. Adam Love. This mysterious person is the whole reason we're running around here tonight. Who in the world is that person? Are they someone involved in the incidents like Abe guessed? I drive down the mountain road, trees running us on both sides. The trees look the same as before, but it feels like the malice has faded. Ah, isn't that the rumored phone booth? When you pick up a call from a spirit and answer the question, then they tell you the place you're looking for. Then you die. Didn't you exercise that spirit already? Too bad, it'll never happen again then. Did you hear that from I? Yep. And in OO Arts, too. It's mentioned in the Moya Peace Corner. I see. Say, spirit doctor. Why do you look troubled? Oh. I just feel like it's time to identify who this Adam Love person really is. What? Aren't you interested, Hazuki? Well, of course I am. Here's my deduction. Act 1. Who is Adam Love? A few names pop into my mind, though. I'm not really sure about some of them. I wonder if I can convince Hazuki with my explanation. It's you! I heard it from my conjecture that Adam Love is Karu Hazuki. Adam Love is you, Hazuki. Huh? What makes you think that? Abe said Adam Love knows a lot about the Mark incident. And you seem to be quite knowledgeable of it. I mean, I heard it all from I. You mean the Princess Mock poses Adam Love. 
Then you use that as a foundation. Ask me to investigate with you. That's my guess. What do you think? Intriguing. It makes sense, so... Hazuki remains composed, though she seems convinced by my theory. I want to believe this is the right choice. Well, possibility is a possibility. Is there any clear evidence that connects me with Adam Love? Evidence, huh? I feel like there's something about Hazuki's face and clothes I give it away. How should I explain it to her? If I'm able to give her a rational explanation, Hazuki might just break down and confess. Yeah, to make up. I focus in on Hansuki's hoodie. I put in Hansuki's hoodie. More specifically, the print on her torso. The letters under the UFO read Adamski type. Adamski model. If I remember correctly, that's the name of the disc shaped UFO. <laughs> Crap. Adamski, Adamsuki. So your name is Adam Love. Mm. You're totally right. I expected no less from you, Spirit Doctor, Death Mark II. You got me. Looks like this is the right choice. You were the one who posted the Prince's mock rumors in the Fred, right? Did you really witness what happened in H-City? It's all a lie. I posted because I wanted to get your attention. And why did you do that? Because I really want to see a spirit. You have a connection with spirits, don't you? So I thought I'd be able to see one if I toured the haunted spots with you. We we're gonna show our marriage to get the, uh, the idea to do our outfit based off of it. Is it perhaps because... You're searching for a good theme for your occult idol dreams. Yep. I need to decide my theme before I make my debut, but I can't come up with any ideas. I don't want to start off on the wrong foot. Hazuki's expression turns downcast. She's been positive the entire night. It's my first time hearing her whine. She seems to be really worried. Is this also why she's been wandering alone at night? Spirit Doctor. Sorry for causing you trouble. The Princess Mock we were hunting is nothing but a creation of our own imagination. And with the night growing deeper, we no longer have a reason to tour H City. Let's return to the Kujo Mansion for now. Are you feeling better, Hazuki? Yeah. The trains have stopped running. I'll take you home. You live in Kamakura Ward, right? Thanks. Hazuki remains disheartened. She only has herself to blame, but... She must have been desperate. I don't really have the heart to blame someone who went to such great lengths. Is there any way I can cheer her up? Show your work area. Do you want to see where I work, Hazuki? Workplace, hideout. Do you have, like, talismans, a fire altar, and demon swords? I wish I did. No, I don't have any flashy things like that. Just tools to make dolls and ram stuff I've stolen. Dolls? I think I'm interested. And so, we head to the second floor. I went my own room and invite Hazuki in. So this is your hideout, huh? It's cleaner than I imagined. Are those doll making tools? Yep, those are my carving knives and chisels. Where's the doll? I told me there was a talking doll in this mansion. Yeah, about that. Sorry, but I can't show her to you. The female doll Mary is currently sealed in the mansion storehouse. And the ever female doll I got from Konohara Kami is in Yasuoka's care. She wanted to inspect something about it. I'm still wondering if they turned that ever doll. Because now we know that the depart is 
passed and this the true ending and the the two girls lived. Just because I know Rose is a doll, and then Yashiki has some weird mentioning like, oh, she's a benevolent doll, but her powers mean like monkey paw you. But she was kind of scary too when she goes in her doll form. This is like um from the bad ending of NG. Oh, what a shame. That reminds me. Don't we have, like, photos? If you want to see how she looks, you can look at the frame picture over there. For real? And I remember from Deathmark, Mary's still technically around. Like I said, she's just temporarily suspended. There is, like, a uh, what-if, I think, novel or something where Mary's a good guy. So... So this is the room where I... Kazuki's intently staring at the photo. She remains expressionless as if her soul has been sucked into the picture. Kazuki. Feeling worried, I call out to her. However, she doesn't respond. I shake her shoulders hard. Hey, what's wrong? This is it. It's exactly what I want. There's the NG theme. Mysterious yet adorable. The very essence of an occult idol. This is awesome. <laughs> da -na 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 -na. Hazuki yells as though a dam inside her has burst. I get why she's so excited. I've decided, Spirit Doctor. I'll go with this theme for my occult idol persona. Oh. Okay. Well, that was helpful. I've got to go back home and expand on the idea. Arigato. No problem. I'll take my leave then. Thank you so much, Spirit Doctor. Kind of nostalgic theme. I think NG actually had a better soundtrack, if I remember correctly. Hazuki expresses her gratitude and quickly bounds out of the room. Silence has once again returned to Kujo Mansion. Whew, my goodness. What a wild kid. Hang on a sec. Is she going home on foot? Kamakura Ward is 20 kilometers from here. How many hours is she planning on running? Hmm. She'll probably come back soon. And that was how the investigation of Princess Mock, which began after the sun visit of surprise guest, ended. It turns out the Princess Mock is in an H city. <coughs> However, it's not like she never existed, though. Who knows? She might be running down the expressway tonight. And those who don't give way to her will. <laughs> Extra chapter. N. So, that's it for Death Mark 2. A.K.A. Death Mark 3, really, if you count NG. Or Spirit Hunter 3, actually. So, I think the Death Mark series is a very strong, solid Japanese uh, horror visual novel series. It is not the best, but some of the best ones are kind of a mixture of romance and thriller and some other stuff. So, Death Mark is much more of a pure horror. And all three games... I have like certain complaints about and then certain things I think they do really good. So I'm just gonna kind of like outline it in like a category way how I'm like evaluating the whole series. So character interaction and general writing wise, NG and Death Mark 3 or 2 rather are uh, the better ones. The main theme and connecting story, the best one is Death Mark 1 because you are personally connected to the Death Mark and there's a great kind of like build up and climax to that final event and the whole encounter and reveal of Mary at the end and the uh, the squeaking noise and her coming down the stairs it's really well directed there's some weaker chapters before that but like the final chapter really pays off real nicely of the entire series I think but NG started the trend of being much more character focused 
less character of the week. And then uh, Death Mark 2 kind of falls off of that a little bit. But they also overly rely on bringing back old Death Mark characters rather than developing new ones. Which I don't fully agree with. Mashito is okay. Because Mashito is kind of iconic for this series now. And they know it. Although they kept him in reserve because I, I guess he's just too smart or something. They don't want him like being around too much. But the new actual characters we met were fine. I just wish, aside from the two student girls, we got a little more time with some other characters or things and a little bit less of the original Deathmark characters. Setting-wise, I prefer the first two games just because there's more variety as far as like the encounters and areas. This one's definitely kind of very locked down. Gameplay-wise, this is probably the best of the bunch, although I think they don't take advantage of the, the 2D side-scrolling very much. It's just kind of like... It's just window dressing. It's just to see you walk from one end to the other to like a hallway. And then there's something you can really do, like there's little scares or things you can pull off there that they didn't really go for. But the rest of the general gameplay and everything is technically... It's using upgrades from NG, but like it is the better of the series. Pacing-wise, this one seems a little off somehow. The first one had some pacing issues too, if I remember correctly. I think NG might be the uh, the tighter of the three as far as like pacing and like movement of the story. But for the most part, they're all very similar, right? I think people are gonna feel differently based on which characters they get really attached to in each individual game. Although I think NG might have had the higher number of pure, new, fresh, like fun characters. But yeah, they're all kind of similar. I mean, on a personal level, I still have a kind of soft spot for Deathmark and the whole dynamics that were introduced in that game. Um, it is the weakest as far as, like, CGs and, like, game plans and other stuff. NG notably improved these CGs a lot, added a lot more, added the bad in CGs. Deathmark 2 falls off of that, but they do actually tone down the uh, bad in CGs, which I'm curious if is maybe somewhat intentional, because I do know some laws as far as, like, Game regulation are sometimes pretty tight, or even getting tighter in Japan. But for the most part, NG, every death was really, really horrifying and gory. This one, only like the really, uh, the first set with Hanako was the really gory ones. With the really, uh, creative kills. And then I think Deathmark 1 had like no bad NCGs. But yeah, going for all that, the, the, the big one we're gonna come to, and this is something you heard while I was playing this, as I don't like what they did with the actual ghost encounter sprites. The CGs are fine when you do get a monster in a CG, but definitely it seems like the style changed, and I'm not sure if they got different sprite arts. I don't mean the concept arts, they, they can be very different. But notably, everything has very animated faces and googly eyes. And you, you can't deny it. like you can go back and look at the monsters in the other games, like it is a shift. There was only one monster, I think, in Deathmark 1, when I was looking back on my own playthrough, that had kind of big eyes, but it was like, still surreal stretched like it was still within the style of deathmark and every monster here looks kind of like how you expect a japanese ghost monster to look like while in the other deathmarks they were very surreal monsters they were very eldritch they were like kind of like skin crawling very weird surreal things that were very unique and in this one that's primarily left to the departed themselves they're the only ones that are kind of like the old style everyone else is very different uh, to use just like a general example, let's look at like a, a simpler monster from the, the first one, uh, the one that had like the bees and stuff. And inherently it's just like a big, bloated, almost corpse-like thing with like a little screw drill or whatever. But the inherent thing of what it does to you, like the concept, like it turns you into a literal beehive. Like it drills holes in you and just makes bees birth out of you. It's kind of very, very kind of weird, unique, and horrifying, like very body horror. But in this one we got things like the scissors burst out of you, which is actually surprisingly very common in horror, or non-horror even. And then another one was you got the the mushrooms burst out of you, which is horrifying, yes, but it is a relatively common thing in horror, going way back. And I don't even like Japanese horror, like like Waxworks, or whatever. The one very old horror game had a whole section dedicated where like if you die, like you will get a CG of like you like mushrooms and all weird things growing out of you. But this one, yeah, there's not so much, except for like the hoses, there's not so much like the turtles bursting out of you or the uh, the bees or the the flowers, like things like that. And then even using like the antagonist and everything like Kakuya from uh, NG. Kakuya is a relatively pretty kind of like doll-like being. But when you get she gets to her final form, she turns into this amalgamation of like sisterly love and oddly 
sexual kind of like love love. So she has this weird form that's like a mixture of distorted things of like a young girl and like a wife. And she looks very womanly like but also very bizarre and disturbing. And she's gonna snoo snoo you to death. Like that's what she's gonna do. She's not gonna tear the limb from limb. She's not gonna do this or that. It's this really distorted surreal body that's just gonna like pile up on you. I mean there was some weak monsters in the other ones too, yes. That just gutted you and you're done. But I think as a whole, we definitely lost a lot of the surreal aspects. It was much more typical Japanese kind of horror. Even the school setting with like the bullying stuff and everything, that is a very common like Japanese horror trope and like setting. But once again, the departed themselves is cool. Like just putting the bugs in the mushrooms, like that is very death marky. Everyone else, like, yeah, they're like, this is like Japanese horror. But yeah, that's just something I kind of picked up on, like just a shift in the writing change. So all the games are kind of even as far as quality. Like I said, they all have like ups and downs and like weaker ghosts and better ghosts. But my special heart will always be Deathmark 1, the interaction between Mary, Mashita, and Yashiki and everyone. And that kind of weird dynamic was very unique and kind of very interesting. And if you go on like the fandom and everything that's kind of out there, I think a lot of people kind of agree. There was some very popular characters from NG, of course, but... It just definitely seems like Yashiki and Mashiro are, like, running away. Well, Mary, too. Like, completely running away as far as, like, iconic popularity as far as the series goes. But yeah, that's my thoughts. I think as a trilogy, the whole set is worth it for someone who's really into Japanese horror. Still definitely the uh, one of the best Japanese horror visual novel series. Anyway, so thank you all for watching Play Death Mark 2. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.